Welcome to the November 14, 2018 version of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. I hope you will all join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, to and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining me. And a special thank you for those at home that joined us in the pledge, huh? Yes. Uh, now, for the introduction of members, if we could begin with you, uh, Ms. Wolsey. Thank you. Uh, Selectman Representative Mary Louise Wolsey. David Maurer. Mike Wolf. My name is Jones. Brian Warburton. School Representative Frank DeLuca. Thank you very much. And we have a bunch of uh, uh, brains from the uh, administration. Uh, Christy Pulliam, our finance director, and the brains from DPW, and the assistant or deputy town manager, depending on how you want to phrase it, I guess. And uh, of course, our great Cody secretary, Bob Kravitz. Uh, so let us begin with our agenda. Uh, we have old business. Uh, I wanted to follow up on some information requests that were outstanding from the previous meeting. I have endeavored to capture them off of the video. And hopefully I've ca captured them all, but let's, let's be sure that uh, uh, we go through this one by one. Um, we got an NHMA wage study comparison uh, on the fire as well as in the police that was, uh, in fact, responsive to our request. Is that true or not true? Not true. Not true. Okay. It was, was a responsive to it, but the facts that we asked for were not given. What was uh, wrong? Uh, <clears throat> as for surrounding towns, it didn't include surrounding towns, but besides that, um, it, it also doesn't give in reference to what Hampton does because when I looked at at the meeting I said I would try to look up Hampton. It could be there, but I said I couldn't find it. Okay. So I was also expecting within Hampton ranges for the chief, the deputy chief, and the individual people. Now uh -huh. you may, when we have it in a budget, it's all grouped together. So it's very hard to distinguish who's getting what to compare ourselves in relationship to other towns. There, there is a, a challenge here, and it's probably too small to see on the screen there, but uh, I'll have to grab that up and make it bigger. Apparently, NHMA is uh, temporary sus temporarily suspending publication of this wage study because of lack of participation. I, I saw that like 10 towns, including Hampton, did not include any in statistics. Right. So apparently, even NHMA recognizes that it seems to be statistically too anemic to be called valid. <laughs> Do <laughs> um, you like that phrase all of you do? Eloquently put, sir. Mr. Chairman, yes. may I inquire? You have the floor. Are you talking about the NHMA wage study? Uh, yes. I thought that cost us 15000 to get that that's study. Not, that's separate. What? That's municipal resources. We're talking about oh, okay. the question that Mr. Mara asked, which absolutely did not get addressed. There is on screen there, Louise. Last week. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Mara specifically asked, and, and let me start off by saying, there isn't a police department or fire department in this entire state that doesn't know what their neighbor is making. Right. So let's be clear about that, okay? Right. So um, sometimes information you get uh, that you ask for, I almost wish that people would take the time. This wasn't taking the time. I had to print this out twice, and even on my iPad, it's not lined up. So you have to, in other words, here's Claremont, oh. Durham, Hanover, Lebanon, and you go to the next page, oh, Claremont, this, the salary is way over to the right. So zero effort was put into this. And if, if there was more than five minutes, I could have done this. Well, to be clear, Brian, yeah. zero effort was put into specifying the format we wanted as well. Well, I don't know. So, I mean, okay. you're, you're talking about a formatting problem, basically, and we didn't specify what format. Okay, well, so. the format aside, Mr. Mara specifically asked for wage comparisons. Mm -hmm. That's a key word. And From NHMA, is that correct? Well, I don't even remember NHMA I, was... Wait. I asked the police chief and fire police to, to them to get the information. Yeah, correct. I didn't ask NHMA for to anything. Get the information. I asked right. them. We'll see further down here. We've got on this list that I grabbed... Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a reason. Police Chiefs Association Wage Study. That's what you're referring to now, I believe, right? Police Chiefs Association. We're wage combining study. both. Both of them were asked at the same 
Well, they're actually with two separate requests. Well, I understand that, but they well, both. I didn't ask for the police chiefs. So what I asked for was the town of Hampton, how they got their information. Yeah. It's for them right. to do, not for me to tell them to go to the police teacher in the HMA. They I did, think it's a pretty basic question. They did supply. In reference to, pretty basic questions are to what's the salary range for the chief of police in Hampton, and how does it compare to other towns? Mm -hmm. They did supply. What is the, may I finish? Sure. What is the, the salary for a captain within the town of Hampton and compared to surrounding towns around us? Mm -hmm. Like such, in right. average ways, I'm not trying to go after any, any individual person. To give us a study, because like I started it, right, there was too much stuff on TV this summer in reference to teachers going on strike down south because they were so poorly underpaid. So I didn't know when I saw that, what does Hampton do in reference to police, fire, and teachers? So, so with that being said, if it's too low, I want to up them. If it's too high, you say, well, you get that? Yeah. So we need something to be able to make our decisions guideline. on with a yeah. guideline. That's all I was asking. Yeah. But but you're on the right track. But believe me, it's not too low. Okay. With the police. Okay. And, but right. wait a minute. But, but hold on. This is the key point, Mr. Chairman. The issue that you were raising, and you tried to say it was, it would have been better off if we saw information that stated... 40-year-old, 40 40-year 40 police chief or fire chief in the town of yeah. makes seventy thousand dollars after 40 years. How does that salary come into play? Are there merit increases thrown in in the middle of the year without anybody approving it? Uh, the, the budget gets defeated, but we seem to find a way in this town to give everybody a raise. So that's what I want to know. I don't want to know. And by the way, I could care less about Conway. Well, why would we care about North Conway and Conway? So at the end of the day, my, my request is going to be this. I want to see a spreadsheet, and we have all the technology that can fit in landscape form or whatever, showing, I'm going to use the word 20 towns. It's not hard to get. 20 towns for both police and fire at the administrative levels, non, the non-union levels, and the other towns, how do they arrive at that? Because you could have somebody here in Hampton that's been here four years that's paid four times as much as somebody that's been in the business 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's important information for the taxpayers to know because it's just like what I'm going to talk about in that municipal resources study. And I talked to three people in high-level positions of state today, and my, their comment to me was, well, what about the people that came back that were overpaid? We saw that in Liberty Mutual, right, Dave? Probably. When they downgraded yeah. positions, but that's important, and that's what David asked for last week, and he didn't yeah. get it. And what I was hoping to do is go down these line items and simply say whether or not the request was satisfied or not, or whether it's not relevant. Okay, well, it wasn't satisfied. So okay. let me let me just uh, okay highlight this. So given the qualifier on the NHMA wage study uh, relative to them, quote unquote, temporarily suspending its publication, yep. should we simply not be requesting NHMA wage information for that reason? But why does it have to be NHMA? It well, I'm not saying. Should we suspend getting NHMA wage information? Oh, absolutely. For Forget it. Okay. We're getting rid so of that anyway. So NHMA is off the table in terms of a valid source I don't know why for wage wanted. comparisons. We're in agreement on that? Yes. Right? I, I, We're I in just, agreement on that, Mary Louise? Well, wait a minute. I don't want to go I, off topic I, I misunderstood here. what you were doing. The wage study that we got through That's the NHMA different. was for non-union positions. Not, it didn't have anything to do with police or fire. So that's the that's, only study well, that's I'm correct. aware of. That's what we're talking so about. So I see what even. you're trying to do. The that's request the was study, police yeah. and fire. Right. But and I'm the saying fire chief was here and he said to do it. And the police chief We understand. We can't do anything about the contractual. Yeah. People. Okay. okay. So I'm canceling the references to wage, NHMA wage studies. Yeah. Uh, Got to be a better way to get that information. Okay. So uh, the amount needed for sufficient protective clothing for 2019. Mm -hmm. You all got copies of that, right? Yes. We that's been satisfied? Mm-hmm. Getting the copies has been satisfied. How we're going to go? We got about the information. That was the request. We got the information. So it's Correct. I would like to say that that write-up is outstanding. Yeah. By that's the, a hot button. The, I can tell you in time. By the fire chief, but that's an example of you ask for something, you get all the data, so yeah. you can properly and the, evaluate it. The MRI comparison study, we all got that. Correct. That request we're, has we're been satisfied. Through, yes, we're sifting through it. Yes. But the request has been satisfied. That's yes? correct. Yes? yes. Okay. Police Chief Association wage is still pending, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't heard a word on that. But we, again, to be fair, we asked for, you know, by Thanksgiving, so there's plenty of time there. Um, 
hardware support. And, and by the way, can, can I just interrupt you, Mr. Chairman? Because it seems to me what Mr. Mara's request was and watch the tape. I made specific requests of the police chief, and he watched the tape. I'm not interested in. I think I captured it later on. Let's go down okay. the list, okay? I hope you do. So the hardware support, maintenance, repairs, more detail requested that's still pending from the police chief. Outside agencies, detailed report, detail. pay and hours work per outside officer. Title and individual. Can't have a police chief out of town on Hampton Beach. It's absolutely I'm ridiculous. Per officer, is that sufficient? Abs no. We've got per pay title, records. Per officer, I want per officer slash title, is that what you want? And name, yes. Per officer applies, assumes name, I think. Yep, and community. And we did say Thanksgiving, so I don't have a problem right. with that. So that's still pending. I just modified the, the statement there. Okay, pay difference between previous and current Park and Recreation Department heads. Christy, uh, we're still pending on that. I assume you have yes, until Thanksgiving. I didn't that was a request, so I will mark that. Indeed it was. I had to have been. I made it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Instant gratification. <laughs> and we also added to that an excellent it's on the video. I went through the whole video trying to get well, everything. Excellent, uh, excellent process, but I do want to add that there was a lot of discussion in relation to the Recreation Department. Where did we arrive or come up with 22000 for a new director's position of the parking? We asked that. I needed that in the study, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so that's all I intended to do on the information okay, request. Fine. Yep. Uh, in fine. terms of getting that list validated, yep. uh, it, 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 we can we can add to this list now or wait until after we deal with uh, the rest of the agenda. What's your? Preference? I would say we'll probably get through, uh, let DPW go through this. Okay, yeah. fine. People waiting. Fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, next on the old business item is uh, HamptonBud.com, still being uh, polished. Uh, I encourage you guys all to go out to HamptonBud.com and review our schedule, which is going to be discussed later on under new business. Uh, but I also wanted to highlight uh, there was an error on, on my part. There was an amendment on Article uh, 13 of the 2018 annual meeting. Uh, an amendment was not captured in the Warren article list. I discovered that during my research earlier this week and corrected it so it's now correct. I did make reference to that very textual Warren article in our May 15 self-training exercise. Correct. So uh, while the conclusions that were drawn from that exercise remain accurate. Uh, the lack of the amendment being reflected in that text was not accurate. Correct. So I wanted to let you know that I made that error, I corrected the error, and I own the error. Okay? So, on to uh, any any other old business, by the way. Old business. Mary Louise. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in light of uh, the uh, HamptonBud.com, et cetera, that is not a town channel. So when voters and taxpayers are looking for information, they generally go to the town website on town of Hampton. As a taxpayer and resident, and also having served many years on the budget committee, and you and I have spoken about this, I'm having a problem trying to figure out about the budget committee meetings. I did look before I came over here tonight and you have tonight's meeting posted. I think it's a terrible disservice to the public, and you and I have discussed this, to not have a schedule. This is the budget now. This isn't regular monthly meetings. This is the annual workshop for the budget. Mary Louise, are you talking something schedule? something that you're you, going Mary Louise, to are you talking schedule? Yes, I am. All right, that is, that is later on in the meeting under new business. The schedule is under new business later on in the well, agenda. I don't have so a save your fire for that point in time. Thank you very much. Anything else under old business? Thank you. I Christy, do you have an overview for the uh, DPW budget? Okay, I believe the uh, crew in the camera room is about to switch the monitor to your control. Uh, so that you can do that summary. Maybe not. Maybe not.
Okay, excellent. So the Public Works Department total budget is five million six hundred and fifty five thousand two hundred and twenty dollars, which is four hundred and forty eight thousand five hundred and nine or eight point six one percent greater than the two thousand eighteen default budget. Wages make up two million five hundred and eighty two thousand six hundred and eight dollars or forty five point six seven percent of their budget. Contracts make up one million four hundred and sixty five thousand five hundred and fifty two or 25.92%. Gasoline and diesel makes up $126,048 or 2.23%. Utilities make up $382,808 or 6.77%. And items not categorized make up $1,098,205 or 19.42%. The graph is showing that. Uh, the breakdown of the 8.61% increase, contracts account for 321,816 or 6.18%. Wages account for $90,331 or 1.73%. Utilities account for $42,902 or 0.82%. Gasoline and diesel accounts for $20,799 or 0.4%. And items not categorized account for a negative $27,338 or negative 0.52%. And then there's the pie graph showing those, the 8.61% increase broken down there. And that is all. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on Christy's summary? You want to call it the first section? Mike? Call out the first section. On highway streets and bridges? Yes, discussion on highway streets and bridges, please. Under administration? Yes. Um, first of all, welcome Director Jacobs and Deputy uh, Hale. I, I want to compliment you on the Hans Lane uh, job. Uh, it was unbelievable. It had to be done, and you guys came forth in a short time frame and I, I have to tell you it was uh, and, and I specifically want to compliment Deputy Hale because the amount of information that you communicate to the public is so critical and is so much appreciated and we see you around and you're always communicating stuff and I, I, I one who's part of a big communication right Mike from 1995 and Mary Louise were all together and started the TV in this town and it's really good I guess I have a question. The part-time wages um, under administration, wh why, where was the increase? In, it seemed like a pretty good increase, and it went up 22 percent. But is there a, was there a reason for that? Or? The f under the part-time, what we did do is we made the wage for the seasonal highway laborers, uh, the beach crew supervisor, uh, comparative to what a starting labor would make on the crew because they're doing the exact same work uh, as the later it was something that we had increased the wage rate for and these were these positions so were these positions that were talked about the lower scale folks that you moved up is that what to the bottom scale the they're bottom, the bottom scale. scale yeah okay good yeah thank you the other question I had was, and I always love seeing the, the training because I'm a huge believer in that. So 29% increase in the staff development for highway, and I just kind of, I want to kind of figure, even though it's not, we're not talking a lot of money here, cost for work-related education, road scholar, we know Teresa McGinnis and others through the years have done that, GIS training, and vehicle maintenance training. So where did we arrive at 4000 for for that, I mean, why why is that a flat four thousand? It was an allocation. Um, you take the number of people that we have times, let's say, everybody use, and it's probably down in here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, contractual incentives, SCA members, uh, incentives based on the level of completed ranges. There's two things that one. Are you doing career incentives? Uh, I'm staff doing staff development, development highway under staff. administration <laughs> line. So. Uh, Sorry, four three one one one, oh three nine one zero. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've looked we've looked at the number of people we have. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I have five new people that are uh, three out of five have already achieved their their new CDL license. Um, 
but those are the people that we need to train to bring forth to run chainsaws, uh, plow snow, uh, paving, road culvert uh, installation, things of that nature. So they're, they're new people with, um, that while they have a good skill set, they just don't have a, the total skill set. And the only other question in this section I have. Can I ask a question about that? Oh, yeah. go ahead. It's kind of like an apprentice. Did they get a certain amount of training and then they're with uh, supervisors and yeah, continue for, to, I would assume some of the, you said a lot of things to learn. Right. Particularly like pavement. I couldn't get that within one or two days of schooling. Right. Well, we have, right. For instance, we have people that might come to us and they've got a lot of uh, electrical skills or plumbing skills or carpentry skills. But paving, probably not. Right. Um, <laughs> The other thing is, you know, just because they passed their CDL last week, I'm not going to give them a really nice six-wheel dump truck with plow and wing <laughs> and say, go find those mailboxes, because they will. Um, yeah, you, 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 have to, you have to. You have to be coached. Yeah, yeah mentor. This is also mentor. Uh, continuing education. Yeah. So you see the GIS in there. Yeah. You know, we took our first class or second class maybe while we were in school, new programs, they update new skills, new you know, abilities of the programs, we go mm -hmm. learn those programs, we use them again. I have a quick question, because the last time I talked with the, our manager, he felt that those uh, three individuals would not be continuing because they wouldn't be able to get their CDLs. So have they successfully? We had one, I believe, Yesterday overheard. was, Yesterday. we have one left, and he's still within his time constraints, so okay. things are looking yeah. great. That's a relief. Yep, the gentleman that who's a resident of Maine, had to take a Maine DOT oh, test. Ah, he passed. He, uh, somebody passed the week before. And this, yeah, yeah. the other young man, we know I how hard it, is it was to Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. The only other question I had on this section, just for my own record, so that we can, you know, as Mary Louise and I said, we want the public to hear. Mm -hmm. And this is where they hear it. So am I correct in assuming that Director Jacobs and Deputy Director Hale, your salaries, projected salaries for next year, each include a 3% raise? Not that we're aware of that. There's no raise in there There's for no you. raise in there for us. It's, it's totally done no, at I the discretion that of the board. Our current. And it is our current. There is nothing in there. This is your current. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's all I have for this section. Any other questions on administration of highways and streets? Mr. Frank. Thank you. Uh, I just have a question going back to uh, part-time wages. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, the actual for 2017 was 34,857. Yep. And then budgeted and uh, for 2018, 72,794. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm real, looking on the right line. Okay. Uh, just going yep. across. Right on the budget. Yep. Okay. And your actual year to date as of 9:30, 2018 was 34,316, which accounted for about on average per month of thirty-eight hundred and twelve dollars. Correct. Okay. All right. Yep. And you're projected to hit ninety two forty one is what you're requiring for twenty nineteen. But going back to the twenty eighteen budget, if mm -hmm. you maintain that average of twenty eight twelve, all right, that's an additional eleven thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars for the three months. Okay. Which means that that is based uh, let's see, 34, 35, 45,000 roughly, mm -hmm. and you budgeted 72. So what's the difference? Because on the 2019, you're budgeting 90,247, which means an average per month is 7520, which is way above it. It's almost double your current estimates for this. A number of things come into that. One is that we were not fully staffed during last summer. Mm -hmm. The beach cleanup crew is where this actually, a portion of where this comes out of. Um, we didn't hire an engineering intern this year because I think we used the money to repair a sewer pipe or something else. Okay. <laughs> a few other something else's. So there was a number of lack of expenditures out of that particular line. Tight, tight labor economy, no engineer intern, um, a number of those things. Uh, vehicle mechanic, uh, part-time vehicle mechanics also paid out of this line. Um, He's about the only one that we've had consistently. Right, stay with us. So stay. what's happened is prior to your 
coming on to this BudCon. For about three years, four years, um, it was always suggested you need additional staff. Um, we haven't been able to get additional staff. Um, there's resistance to increasing the budget. Um, so that some it does get made up of from two other lines, part-time and overtime. And that's the reason for it, partially the reason for the increased request in the part-time. So you're looking at a 100% increase for next year? Roughly, month? yes. Well, 23% increase in the, in the salary line, but... No, no, I'm not... To, uh, yeah, I, I see mm -hmm. that. We're on the part-time one? Right. Yeah. But yeah. if I look at what your average was per month... Oh, usage. Yes. Usage. Yeah, but there again, if you can't find the bodies, you can't spend the money. Okay, so then you're projecting a surplus for the end of this year, then? We're going to do... Of around 25000 Probably in that... Un, un, yeah, on unspent line. in that line. Unspent right. in this line. Yeah, because we didn't get the people. Right. Okay. Any other questions under administration? How is the streets, Mr. Morrow? The telephone was, in 2017, 15000 615 2018 was 22814 and it's now projected to be 31,280. Could you help me with that, you please? Jump that one? I would love to jump at that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest things uh, that we do down at DPW is communicate. We communicate with the public through the phone systems that we answer for whether it's a street sign, a sewer, a drainage, or you name it. Our phones were not working. Um, they would cut out, they would drop calls. It was uh, old headsets, old receivers. Uh, so we went and chose to redo our phones, relay fiber lines uh, so that we can stay connected. So our bill has slightly gone up. Uh, our services and drop calls have, our services have gone up, our drop calls have gone down. So it has worked. Uh, we also, all our um, tablets. tablets, excuse me, yeah, that's where it's going, the tablets for our GIS uh, system that we use in the field. Uh, they also are part of this telephone bill. They are all grouped together. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on administration of highways and streets? No, I have a couple. Could you speak more about the fiber lines that you laid for this the telephone? Oh, Paul would not be very proud of me. I call it something like black curtains and fiber, and did anybody else want to uh, jump in uh, on all that? Um, we did get new fiber lines uh, from <coughs> the street. So basically from all the way street? from Hard Arts Way, okay. all the way into our facility, okay. to the wastewater treatment plant, to our DPW building out into the garage. So everything was rewired. We have okay. new uh, phone sets that work off a... Um, IP thank you. Voice IP. Got it. Yes, yeah, I told you I would need help on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's just a we have voicemail now where we didn't have voicemails before we so have I mean, vo uh, voice over IP is much less expensive uh, that's my understanding anyway, my experience so that would suggest a decrease at least from that element of it Christy do you want to help on this yeah. one just because we went through a very large exercise we of every phone line we moved all the telephones up to um, administration I believe also you used to have oh, your telephones. Oh, see, your telephones used to be in three different sections of their budget, and now it's all up under under um, okay. administration. So that will be the actual basically, price basically per phone line. Apples and oranges when we're doing right. Yeah. The Got price it. per phone that. line w um, only changed by like a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. I believe, okay. in regards to um, your Thank comment the on, on the bill. Thank and then the that. tablets, I don't believe, were in last year's budget because that was with the asset management. Correct. Which Went into place this year, correct? Right. March so, of this year. So you didn't have the, um, if you Got look it. at the detailed section, I think it breaks down the tablets. You didn't have that 28, was it 2,800? $40 per month $40. per tablet. Yeah, that wasn't in um, so this, That's a rental of the tablets the, for uh, mm -hmm. SS management software. Correct. Well, we own the tablets. Uh, we, those still, are the ones we got under the grant for at no cost to the town. The $60,000 grant we got from mm -hmm. through DES. We purchased the software. Got the training, service. but the it's uh, forty dollars per month. It's the hot spots. It's the hot service, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So it's at forty dollars a month per device for the cloud service. Is that right? Right. Forty. 
Yeah. Each tablet right. is forty dollars a month for the cloud service. Yes. Not for the tablet itself. We Correct. Own those. Okay. Right. We own tablets are owned forty for the fully service. Fully understood. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, now you guys connect to the internet uh, from your base in Hot Ox Way, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And I assume now you're running from on the internet on the fiber. Is that right? Correct. So you yes. must be really enjoying some great speed improvements. We're not complaining. I yes. think that's really super duper. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. And so is this, does this include the asset management software and communicating as people call in uh, and then you call them back when they? Well, it's part of it, but you, you will see the uh, asset management software because we do have an annual maintenance uh, okay. fee. That's in a different line, right. I believe. Well, it's not an administration, okay. so let me continue but on with my administration when you're question, phoning, Mary Louise. When, when people Mary phone Louise, wait right. until you have the floor. Um, staff, see, staff development on the highway, I believe, Brian, you touched on this, but I didn't quite get clear as to how you're off 28.5% on that. Could you say, state it briefly so I can understand it, please? And staff, staff development, development, staff highway. development highway. A portion yeah. of that is actually tied to the contract because um, the contract. Yeah, that's, that's under career incentives. It's under career incentives. Yes, we're going to staff development. We have two okay. of them. Career incentives yeah. are part of our contracts. The staff development is what we do to continue training, further education, continuing right. education. Right. So these are classes that either I take, Chris takes, any of the staff take, uh, with permission to either build on skill sets they have or to learn new skill sets. So why are we up 28.5% on that? Because we have new staff and we've looked at what we've passed. So we're passed. talking about more training? Yes. Uh, not increase in training costs, but simply more training More training. More okay. training spread over occurrence. all the employees Got versus okay. three you. or four or yeah. six. I don't need to drill down too much on this stuff. Okay. Um, water is up 97%. What's going on there? We have a water leak. We'll fix it. <laughs> First, we have to find it. <laughs> now, we know which 400-foot section it's in, but we don't. We have not yet procured the funds to dig up all 400 feet and relay a, a water line. It's the water line that comes into the main garage. Well, are we going to hear plans for asking for those funds? Yeah, $60,000 is a warrant. Isn't it a warrant article? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have a and small so thing we, called ledge. If we then fix the leak, then... We won't be seeing this increase. Right? Well, it also, the other thing that, that comes in in water is that um, they've gone from quarterly billing to monthly billing. Yeah, we all enjoy that. Right? We pay $12. I have some pump stations that use two gallons of water, mm -hmm. tw 12 gallons of water, and I still pay a 15 or whatever the, yeah, the bill, the meter yeah. fee. Mm -hmm. and the, so you take that times the 22 locations I have separate water meters at and that's part of the that's a major part of this increase so it isn't just that one water as of meter. September this year you're up you overspent on this line subline yeah. by 50 percent basically yeah and you're saying it's because pretty much do multiple to meters that you have to pay a minimum rate on that far exceeds <clears throat> with your actual usages well said thank you I try well, can I just uh, it just clicked off here and, and Mrs. Wolsey and Mr. Pluff and I are going to be talking a lot about this, and this goes back to my mind 25 years ago. You have a water leak that's costing you thousands of dollars, and you're going to ask the taxpayers via a warrant article, why isn't it in the budget? It's got to be fixed. I mean, I don't, I don't get that. Because I don't want to do it halfway. Right? Hear me out. We have a, you have a rather large garage there, six-bay garage, yeah. two bays for maintenance and mm -hmm. office. It's attached to it. Yeah. Rather than just repair that one inch little copper line, I, what we've looked at and come up with is there's a water main that runs on the west side of the property. I want to tie into that with an eight inch main. I want to bring fire suppression into the, to the building. I want to do it once, right? What and happens if the voters turn it down? Then I'll have to dig up all 300 feet and put in a one inch copper. Line. What will be the cost associated with that? That was a 60,000. 60, oh, Close to 75. No, if, we the, did voters, if the voters vote, vote down this theoretical warrant. First, I have to find it. I'll probably just end up starting at one end and dig to the other end. Right, and so what will be the cost of that exercise? Assuming the voters deny the funding and be I the warrant. I don't know. Guessing it? No. No? Okay. 
Yes. So now you wasn't was it your, was it your decision to not put it in the budget and put it in a separate one article? Correct. Okay, so you made that financing option. Okay, Are we clear on that, Brian? It's a one-time charge. I understand that. I just want to be sure that Brian's clear on it. Well, and Brian else is clear on well, what he's talking about, what he's planning on doing. I'm clear on it. I okay. still don't understand why it's not in the budget. But Can I just ask a question? I thought you were all done with administration, no, you guys. Just, I'm going to so I'm asking questions. I'm just going to ask a question. Oh, wait, I'm just Mr. Frank, back. make it brief. I am. Why can't you take the surplus that you just, we just talked about earlier and use that towards fixing the leak? You've got, like, you're going to have, like, a 20, based on the numbers, you're going to have, like, a twenty four twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 surplus. My budget's been frozen for a month. I don't, I've been informed I don't have, the town does not have a surplus as a whole. I, I operate with, with under the constraints of all the other departments. So there is, with combination of Ann's Lane, the Force Main this summer, mm -hmm. repair Sword and Bray, temporary. There, By I the way, you did an awesome job. I don't have a. It's not anticipated that if I do have a surplus, it'll be very large. Okay. Uh, uniform rentals is up twenty five percent. New contract because of yeah. uh, new employees. Is that new contract? We rebid it. And it's the new contract. Uh huh. Is it a multi-year contract, by any chance? I yes. believe it's a three. Uh huh. Well, gee, I'm glad to see the federal storm water requirements. One of my beloved line items is actually down 50 percent. I was thinking of who you might have that. predicted that, <laughs> other than me, for the last five years. Huh? Amazing. All right. Any further questions on administration? I have a question. Mr. Barr. Could you tell me street signs? This is administration. Is that decided here? Do we have another part of the? Oh, it's, no, I believe there's another line there's for another signs. Line. It's in the next section. Okay, yeah. any other questions on the administration of highways and streets? Thank you. Thank you. No further questions on that topic. Engineering. We have one wonderful line item there. You're up 22.86%. We only added the 8,000 as the part of the contractual obligation for the asset program mm -hmm. under this line. Okay. So we use last year's line plus the 8,000. This is the ASM contract that has a non-appropriation clause as a multi-year contract, right? What's the ASM? Yes. Asset Management. <laughs> our People GIS is our asset management uh, provider. Right. We have a yearly contract with them for their service because they host our asset management system. There are so help. It's a one year contract. Each year it is a one year contract. Okay. And when does that year begin, contractually speaking? I think it's roughly annually. Annually, January. January, January to okay. calendar year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. calendar year. Yeah. We've got a grant for that. Any further it's questions on it's engineering? It's March. Thank you. Isn't this Sundo? It's on the next section. Uh, paving and reconstruction. Questions? Great. Cleaning and maintenance. Questions? There's your street signs, David. There's the signs. Yeah, yeah. good. When we're on, I'm on, and you on, <coughs> Exeter Road heading towards 95 from Route 1, there used to be a <clears throat> speeding sign. I'll call it a speeding flying because it would tell you how fast you're driving, which I thought was very, very good, by the way, because people usually come from Route 1 yeah. and they go real fast at that point. They see that and they slow down. That I've noticed really good. Mm -hmm. It disappeared two, year, two weeks, two months ago or something Police like department. that. They're moving them around town so that they'll go to different areas. So every so often you'll see a post Be because you, And then I noticed it was coming in into town versus going out. I think we should have it whether we get more signs because I think they're very effective and I think it should stay because that's one of the most important speed lines in the entire town, in my opinion. So you think and we should get those electronic signs without wheels, right? If they're on wheels, <laughs> I don't know what they're on. No, they're, they're, well, on. If they're not on wheels. You can't move them so easily. That's the point. Okay. They came through PD and I believe <coughs> PD got a grant for them. So there were multiple uh, that the town received. And we've been working with them to install the posts so they can move them throughout town. Okay. Any other questions on? Uh, There's also the one other point. When you, it was in the paper about four or five years ago that when people on that road are going out of town, the speeding is five miles per hour higher than it is coming into town. 
Well, I noticed the other day it's 30 miles going out, but when you come around the corner, it's 35 coming in. Just a minor thing. Yeah, okay. yeah that's actually. But my point that's being, in, in police enforcement, really. In reference to those signs, I think they're very, very effective, and I think there's a lot of speeding on, on, on Exeter, mm -hmm. Exeter Road. Yeah. Any so other questions on Is it possible we could get another one? It would come through the police department. Through the, oh, yeah. so you have to talk to the police, not you. I'm they're, sorry. They're not in my budget at all. Okay. <laughs> I have a question on high equipment. You're down 22 plus percent. I cut six thousand five hundred dollars out of that line to help balance my budget. That's the only reason it's cut. Yeah. So, what, am I hearing that what you really need is a zero percent uh, change in that line? I'll make it work, Department One. All right. Any other questions on? Yeah. I just want an excellent Robert. question you just asked. And, and once again, the largest budget in town. And just like last year. <laughs> very <laughs> useful and somewhat helpful. Um, Director Jacobs just said it. You know, he, he cut it so to fit into the budget. Is that how we're running? See, this is the problem I'm having. You guys got a big nugget on you. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, we've been doing it for years. I mean, John Hangen was here prior. You know, we take money from, it's always public works we took money from. We, mm -hmm. we understand that. But with, with what I've said, and this is, a con and I've watched you, Mr. Jakes and Jen, and you've done a great job, and, and, and I really mean that. My biggest problem is, that's why I said last week, this budget is not going to fly with anybody because we hear things like this on things that you need. And then we all of a sudden, you know, Selectman Woolsey says at the meeting, we need Ann's Lane done to get done, and you guys, and because guess what? It was going south. That's my point. We, we, we start doing a lot of these. We can't fund it. And I feel for you, it just seems to me that with the total management of this town, we need mm -hmm. to just look at what the entire, when you're putting budgets in, because we're hearing this throughout the budget. So he'd rather see a 0% increase than minus 22. And because of that, it, and it's just too bad. That's. I, I would suggest, by any yeah. want to consider highlighting that. And come for, back to it. For the conversation we have on the total. Thank budget. you. Mm -hmm. I'm all done. Thank you. Anything else on cleaning nope. and maintenance? Thank you very much. Uh, storm drainage. Questions? Drainage construction zero, and please don't tell me you're going to put it in a warrant article. Yep. Okay, we won't, we won't tell you that. No, uh, actually, this is a very, <laughs> this is a very valid, <laughs> this is a very valid point. Uh, so you were talking about Anseline and how we came through and we did that. And that one we did with a, a uh, mixture of funding. We used uh, Warren article funding yeah. from the paving of streets. We yeah. used funding that we had here and there and maybe somewhere else uh, to, to get it all done. The reason that took so long to get done is because we never had one pot of money to pull it all from. Mm -hmm. And Anne's Lane suffered. The, the road, the riding surface, our infrastructure. Oh. So we we had to refocus on how we were going to do this. And to rebuild a road, we need to look from the inward out. So when you look at the drainage construction, our next road, the road that you'll see before you're in a Warren article, is going to be Molten Road. Mm -hmm. It needs a sewer redone. Yeah. It is all clay pipe. It has zero drainage. We have a plan to install closed drainage. It needs to be paved side to side. So from top to bottom, it's longer than Anne's Lane. It has more sewer line and drain line. It's a mess. So the drainage construction money is in the Warren article. Okay, so am I hearing that the uh, subline item for drainage construction is, is becoming obsolete in terms of the uses, useful for management? We're actually going to put that cost embedded in the cost of rebuilding the streets. We're okay. going to try. Per, per project. So that line item has basically become obsolete. Okay. That's enough right year. there. And go ahead, Brian. You got more questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Any other questions? And thank on you for the explanation. Storm and drainage. Mary Louise. I just guys, we have falling apart roads all over town. And lock, the end of, of uh, High Street, when you mm. get near the ocean, it, it's a disgrace, the condition of some of these. And we just haven't, I either haven't had the resources or haven't had the will to take care of it. But we need to do something with our roads. And that's we, what we're we trying really to do. Any yeah. other questions on storm drainage? Nope. 
I have one. Repairs and maintenance, you're down. Yeah. You're up 30%. I want to say a couple, two words on that. You want me to find out what it is? Well, make it mm -hmm. two to 20. I'll be two to 20? Yeah. Let me see what we put in this one. Um, I think we did it based on spending. Well, your actuals are only 10% of what you're budgeting. Or actually, slightly less than 10% of what you're budgeting. Actuals up till September. But that is now all done because of Ann's Lane. So that will be drained. That so will all be spent by the end of the year. Spent. Okay. Yeah. If that was like an in-house concession with in talking with Toby that if you were going to eliminate drainage construction in its entirety, you got to give me something to work with repairs and maintenance wise because that's what I'll, even though repairs and maintenance could be replacing a whole catch. I got it. That's quite clear. No problem. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move on to sidewalks and curbs and it looks like we have a similar situation where that is going to become obsolete as well, right? that line item. Because mm -hmm. I, as you well know, I brought this up every year. Why do we have a worn article sidewalks and have sidewalks in the budget? Well, so now it seems like yeah. we're cleaning this up. Is that what I'm seeing here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I like the hearing that, Jen. And hopefully, Chris will agree with you. No. <laughs> no, it, we sat, need to do stuff. I sat with Fred, and, and, we have and it. Um, this is one of those lines where we we feel that there isn't a sufficient size pot to right. get the job done, which is what mm -hmm. we've okay. heard you loud and clear. Yeah. So this year, Fred and I have written, and it's called uh, Sidewalks and ADA Compliance. Uh -huh. We are very much within the community non-compliant with our crosswalks and our ADA right. ramps. Mm -hmm. They need to be lumped together. They need, uh, the other thing we found is so that we couldn't. that's going to be a warrant article, right? Yes. Okay, got it. $100,000 warrant article. Okay, thank you. And that's what right. it's titled. So that's basically an obsolete line item from now going forward. Mm -hmm. At least that's the management plan. I applaud that, and no one has any questions on that, right? Mary Louise. The safe routes to school, uh, and I don't know where th that stands in the school petitioning for the sidewalk on the south side of Winnicott Road all the way mm -hmm. to Center School. Have you guys been updated on any of that? Because I know that's been in the works for quite a number of years. I did have a conversation with the superintendent a few months back mm -hmm. talking about how we work together. Uh, yeah. between their budgets, our budgets, and, and what we can do to implement safe routes to school um, recommendations. Especially on Winnicott Road. We have in the past. We went after the TAP grant. Uh, mm -hmm. That was to do the whole stretch from Route mm -hmm. 1 uh, forward. That would have done it. Uh, that We did not get awarded that one. Okay. Uh, but I also look at that section much like I look at Moulton Road. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. we pick the next ones. Right. Anything else on the obsolete yep. line of sidewalks? Thank you. I, uh, snow and ice removal. Any questions, Mr. Frank? <laughs> he, no, you go ahead. I can go first. That's you okay. know, we're probably going after the same one. But my, okay, I, I, I'm just basically asking you a question. I see that the actuals in 2017 uh, were 93,776. Mm -hmm. You're budgeted in 2018, 67,860. Year to date, and I know this has not come up yet because we still got November, the rest of November and December mm -hmm. going with storms and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and right. then I look at your budget for 2019, and it seems to me that you're under budget. Can you because you're going at 70? And if we have any any winter like we did last year, you're going to probably go over budget, and that's not only on the part time. Uh, overtime uh, wages, but you know, equipment, salt, went and uh, sand. Okay, well, I'm gonna well, sand. No, I, and I'm just saying, I feel you're under budget. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Right. Is there a question in there, Frank? Yes, what's the question? The question is, do you think that you should have? No, no, okay, okay. thank you very much, Mr. Walberg. Um, hired equipment winter, so I know the projected. Request for 2019 is 75,000, um, which obviously is needed. What would you say is the percentage of outside hired equipment to plow snow in this town? A percentage of labor compared mm -hmm. to the to people within public works that have done this as part of the operation? As Jen just whispered in my ear, whispered loudly. 
we can get you that percentage. But um, we have 22 snow routes. In the past, we've only had two, possibly three snow routes assigned to outside consultants. Mm -hmm. This winter, we, were ha we have to have four routes assigned to outside consultants because of the five new hires. We have people retire. Um, we've had people that, um, one's on a medical, um, one's expected to retire within a year, doesn't really want to plow after 40 some odd years, and I can I respect I that. that is, yeah. um, so we have a short, shortage of trained, currently trained right. people to actually staff those 22 routes. So we actually hired a second contractor for this winter and um, as a result of the, the combination of those factors had to increase or request an increase in the hired equipment outside. Oh, and I, I think this is good. I mean, it, it has to be done, but I think this discussion is permeating to what we've been talking about all along. People retiring, people sick, people not taking these trash jobs, and that's a bigger discussion, but that is something that I'm gonna be very interested in as we review the final review, Mr. Chairman, this is this is something that should be an eye opener for the town that you know yeah. the seventy five thousand that we need outside. We've always had outside folks, but right. with that amount, that's going to be in your and Jen's mind as far as planning ahead. Because I I think it sends. It, we're talking about another message, which we'll get into later on. Right. I, Any other questions yeah. on snow and ash removal, Mary yes. Louise? Okay. Could we? I, I'm aware that you've got two bins for the plowing mm -hmm. for the winter. I'm wondering if it might not be beneficial to the department and the town to bid out as much of the snow plowing work as you possibly can. If you are hiring people to plow, it's their responsibility to repair their own vehicles and take care of the maintenance and all that stuff. It would be, it would show in what they charge you for the plowing, but you'd have less um, vehicles to worry about and maintenance and all that stuff. Do you think it might be more cost effective to try to to bid out more? We wouldn't get anyone. They wouldn't? I'll tell you why. Um, with 22 routes, so let's say you needed 20 pieces of equipment. Yep. You're talking an SUR or continental paving or uh, Severino or somebody that's got 22 pieces of rolling stock. Oh, okay. If you know where the Hannaford is, the market baskets, yeah. the Walmarts, they contractually agree to pay them $100,000 just to make their lease payments and to keep people on retainage, even if it doesn't snow. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So, it's not so much an option. It, it, right, it, it's not an option. So one. there's nobody that would be willing to give us even half that equipment. Okay. So we still need to have some of our own resources yeah. um, and, and to answer, you know, one of the other questions is like, for instance, when we have just a salt run, it's just, it's done internally. We have uh, yeah. five or six trucks now with salt yeah. uh, sanders on them and we do our own sanding salting route. So yeah. a lot of times we're called out early and we stay late on the storms. The consultants, the contractors that you're just in for the, the meat part of the storm, if yeah. you will. I just Thank thought you. I'd ask. Thank you. Yeah. And how about, the side, how about the sidewalks? Same thing, we do those internally. Okay. Further questions on snow and ice removal? Can I just be clear on the salt line? Um, you saw a low, uh, I, it went down 15% because the price went down 15%. I was gonna say the price went down. I took last year's tonnages, as I always okay. do, times mm -hmm. the new bid, Good. state bid price. It went down, so we in turn requested less. Further questions on snow and ice removal? Does that also work with the sand? Your sand went down a little bit too. I have a, I have a, I have a decent enough sand pile that we mm -hmm. thought use some left over. And I have a new, <laughs> when we put this together, we had a different highway foreman. We thought we could do with what we have. Thank okay. you. Yeah. You know, I have to pay homage to Jerry, Jerry Zanoy, who always enjoyed pounding sand at this committee, as you may recall. <laughs> uh, and so I will actually ask some questions that he might have done so. Uh, you have actual zero to date. I thought I heard the recent selectors meeting go by, actually. Buy some, I actually directed the um, highway foreman to buy sand during the summer, uh, sorry, September-ish. Um, he's no longer with us. He's moved on. It's one of those things that 
I just literally have to pick up the phone and start the process. But so you do intend to buy some I have this yeah. calendar budget yes. year? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Good. And uh, you're down, uh, Jerry said no, you're down 27.94%. Okay. And I find it curious that we now call it winter sand, implying there's such a thing as summer sand. Uh, that's when you're on the beach. That's the beach sand. <laughs> <laughs> what about spring and autumn? <laughs> okay, we're all done on that, right? Snow and ice removal. A little humor is always nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to uh, <laughs> municipal sanitation administration. Questions? We have a lot of career incentives in here. Is that contractual or just increasing the training? Or I see career incentives and I see uh, staff development. And so the career incentives are contractual. Yep. Um, so that's under as the in two union sections contract? there. As in union contract. Right, that's Correct. right. Yep. Staff that's development. And then the staff development there is what we uh, do to cover the costs for when they get their Waymaster license, renewal of their uh, certificates, any of the training that they need to be. Uh, again, it's constantly Certification moving. Primarily. Certification and yeah. continuing yeah. education. Okay. Do these? Do any of these in this section, and I cert I'm sure it permeates throughout the rest, and I hope the answer is yes, the, the the training development portion of it, is this helping people within public works that have been there for years or even people who have been there short time, that on a career path to getting some of those positions which you've advertised uh, in the last couple of years which internal folks did not get? Right. Specifically with this department, because we are talking wastewater treatment. Right. Right. I, said, I said transfer station, but it's all the same um, right. type yeah. of incentive. Because that, that's the, right, yep. that's the yep. next I was in the wrong one this bracket time. down. Um, yeah, they're all required to have licenses. For instance, it takes a, uh, there's four grades, one through four. It takes a grade four to operate the plant. We have three grade four operators. We have uh, a number of people that are at two and are working to get up to three and then four. And there's a series of tests, trainings. Um, there's a uh, education facility that the state runs at the Franklin Wastewater Treatment Plant. And that's where a lot of this occurs. That's all I have in this section. Further questions under administration of municipal sanitation? I hear Mr. Morrow. Grease disposal. Ah. Oh, yes. Was in the budget for 3600 and now it's in the budget for actually today it's 24 almost $25,000. Last year we spent $23,000 in one contract removing a large iceberg of grease from the Church Street pump station. Mm. Everyone at the beach uh, who had a grease device did a very good job of Clogging getting rid of their grease down the drain. Which is the wrong way for anybody listening at home. To do it. So uh, I had one fell swoop I had to pay a 23000 basically to get it done. It mm. takes a truck with a longer boom. Uh, it also takes... Uh, a vendor who actually has a place where he can dispose of the grease at, at another facility that could process it. Um, so we broke it. The reason why it's an even 20,000 is we reached agreement with this vendor to try and do four quarterlies so that we don't have a one time iceberg of grease. <coughs> Which would actually be less hold on, guys. Hold on. Dave's got the floor. Which in the long run would be cheaper because it doesn't get to the big claw. You, right. Your handling is very you're maintaining to break along the way. Is yep, there any you. enforcement mechanism in this town? There is. There's a, there's relative a, uh, to these uh, individual grease traps being cleaned properly. We do have a uh, um, grease trap inspector. Um, one of the things that happens is like when the beach What closes, department is that under? It's under the wastewater Waste. treatment plant. He's one of our so great it's under your operators. authority? Yes. Okay. Um, when all, let's say, 70 restaurants need to get done in two days, and they're all closing up shop right after seafood festival. Um, there, a good amount of hot water and boric acid was used, and we've got to basically retrain these restaurant operators. That a clean grease trap is not a good grease trap because then it it did the wrong thing. You basically flushed it or pushed it by. There's a number of people though that we are having some great success with. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting them to capture their grease mm -hmm. and we're also with all the new facilities 
having them install basically outside grease traps, which are large septic tanks, and they're much more effective at capturing the grease. So this sounds more like uh, an honor system than it does enforcement. Yeah. <laughs> it is, because you, in some respects, because you do have to catch them, you know, not cleaning the, the grease trap. And is there any frequency requirement for them to clean their grease traps? Depending on how much grease they use, so it's it's a really a like for instance, some people have an under the sink one that holds five gallons. Some of them have an under the grease under the sink that holds two. So their frequency is basically based upon you know what they're cooking. Um, the and, and I can tell you that we are working on a new sewer ordinance, and it does have more teeth in it with respect to what we so call. It sounds like that is like desperately needed. Flo floatables, organics, and grease. Yes, they're just they're just flushing their their costs for proper cleaning <coughs> down into the taxpayer's wallet. To trying to pass an inspection at the end of the season to and yeah. pass the costs on to the taxpayer. That's Indirect. the bottom line. That's what's yes. happening here, right? Mm -hmm. Mary Louise, you're flapping like a bird over there. Go ahead. It is absolutely <coughs> unacceptable to have businesses or private persons pouring grease down the drain. We used to have an inspector, and then that sort of fell aside. We are going to be sponsoring a warrant article to fund the position of code enforcement officer. We have to crack down on all of this, all of these messes. We need routine uh, inspections of grease traps. And we are going to be asking the public to have a code enforcement officer not just to check on illegal parking and some of the illegal adjustments that people make to their property, especially at the beach when no one's looking, but we are going to be focusing on having serious in inspection and enforcement that is, there is no, no way it is acceptable to pour grease down drains. Thank you, Mary Louise. Uh, but I would point out that it's not really an enforcement problem as much as it is a, a, a poorly existing code to be enforced. You can't enforce a code that is, like, unenforceable. You need an enforceable code. That's what we don't have. I believe that's what the director was telling us. The emphasis needs to be on upgrading that, that code to reflect the reality. Am I not correct there, the, the yes. director? Thank you. Mr. Wahlberg. Let me, so you just said something very interesting. This grease trap person in the wastewater treatment plant, is that a full-time person or part of somebody else's responsibilities? It's uh, one of five jobs he does over yeah. the five well, years. Well, see, then that's so We, we want full-time enforcement. So we don't have a Dick Violet right. like right. we used to have. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. I've sat here, and by the way, just so you know, I know you People have come to this table and said to Mr. DeLuca and I, I love when I hear this, oh, you're new to this table. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm not new to this town, and neither is Frank. <laughs> so we watch the meetings, and Ms. Jen will tell you, I, I'm pretty knowledgeable in this town. So mm -hmm. I sit here and I watch all these positions get created and all these management positions, and, and we've got, and now for, for the life of me, they want a director of parking, which is not going to fly anyway. Nobody's yeah. voting for that. Yeah. Sanitation but, administration. Well, I understand. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you've had your say. So the point I'm saying is this. This is, Mrs. Woolsey is absolutely correct. And she brings up issues that the taxpayers know need to be done. This grease trap, so you said it, and I appreciate the mm -hmm. honesty. One of five responsibilities they do for a major, and, and I go back, and I, I'm going to wake up tonight at 3 in the morning, I'm going to listen to Christmas music and think of the water leak. That's going to drive me crazy from now until March. And so, but we have the management in Hampton, I mean, that to me, when I was running state parks, that water leak would have been fixed the next day. And I would have gone to the governor and said, I don't care where you get the money. It's going to be done. But we seem to come around here. But that grease trap thing, thank you for sharing that, because I, I don't think anybody in this town knows, and I will say to Mr. J to Mr. Chairman's point, when Mr. Violet was doing that role, oh, yes. he did an unbelievable job, and yeah. we didn't have half of this, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Any other questions on uh, administration of whatever it is we're talking about? Well, you know what we're talking about. I'm very clear in my communication. Of course. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> I have a couple of questions because I haven't had my time yet. Uh, Take as much as you need. Thank you, Mr. Lubbard. 
Heating yeah. fuel is up 58 plus percent. Uh, what kind of fuel is that? Let me go back to the. I believe it's. Well, the natural it? gas? Combination. Is it a combination? Yeah, I think it's gas. Yeah. This is in the wastewater treatment plant? Yes, administration. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Municipal sanitation. Mm -hmm. It's not a garage go. heating site. So I gotta go back a sheet. I'm on 48. Didn't put them back in order. Most of our buildings are heated with oh. gas. Heat is yeah. spread over. We have electric heat, we have gas heat, and we have some propane. propane. Yeah. So all three are up. For instance, we have uh, buildings that are, you know, got yes. electric baseboard heat kind of thing, or is it uh, space electric heaters? Some baseboard, for instance, uh, Katie Lane Pump Station, yeah. for instance, has got a baseboard heater, two thousand two hundred dollars a year. Um, oh, okay. But uh, High Street West has got a propane heater, three thousand eight hundred dollars. So it depends mm -hmm. on how they got built and what year, yeah. and with what technology. Um, Merrill Industrial Drive, I know that's a deep pump station. Um, just keeps it somewhat warm because uh, it's it's so deep. It's the background temperature of fifty five degrees. But you know the huge, the biggest part of. Uh, when you look at, and, and that's where the heat gets lost, is electric usage at the wastewater treatment plant alone is $232,000, oh, yeah, which most of that is the electrical blowers mm -hmm. and, and aeration of the, in, mm -hmm. into the lagoons. So um, the other ones are yeah. minor in comparison to that sure. one yeah. big bill. Just be glad you don't have Columbia gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, water is up uh, over 103 uh, percent. Not a leak, I assume. No, that's again like for instance, uh, Campton water. Street water 247, Toll Farm 201. Mm -hmm. Th that's really just to pay water bills. Yeah. Why water. is it up so much? Because they because went. The price of water is up. No, for instance, I don't really use that much water at Merrill Drive or even Church Street, but. Um, the, the monthly billing is in that, what's driven that up. Mm -hmm. The meter charges. The meter charges, basic, sorry. Basic. Right. Well, you know, my water is not 100%. And, the, and you, let me be clear, on the, on the water, like for instance, it's on tonight for the garage. Yeah. The reason why it's on is because I'm working. Uh, we were in a habit for the leak to shut the water off, but when the director went to use the bathroom one night, he realized that was a poor decision. <laughs> so, when the director's working hours longer, we leave the water on overnight. You're talking about you, the director? Yeah. When, oh, you say we, when you say leave the water on, you mean leave it running? Leave it pressurized to the building. Right. So, why would that cause more water usage? It's just pressurized, but not no, being used. No, with respect leak. to the water leak. Oh, okay. So, this is, in fact, back to the leak. this is, yeah. in fact, the, the leak. It's the same leak. No, no, no. It's a different this leak. is water is water. Yeah, yeah leaks are leaks. But right. Matter of, yes, that water usage actually comes through the wastewater treatment plant meter. No. That's how far that water line comes. Very commendable you're in there to midnight, you said? No, no, it's just. Well, well you can tell me. That that. <laughs> <laughs> and when it snows, yeah, it'll be on all night. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. hello. Yeah. May I ask a question? Mr. Tim, are you done your question? He's meditating. <laughs> Well, he's Chair meditating. Mr. Marr. Yes, Mr. Mr. Marr. Chief, Chief, you mentioned earlier, like about two minutes ago, that the blowers were like, two, I thought I heard $230,000 plus. Dollars. What did I hear? Overall, the wastewater treatment plant uses $184,000 in, 184, in electricity. 000. And when you add up all the pump station electricity, yeah. it adds up to that. Two thirty-two. This is just a side thought. I'm mm -hmm. not telling you what to do. But if it's using that much for the blowers, would solar panels help out in a situation like that over time? No, but what is going to help is the, um, which will make a huge difference, is this new, the $11 million sewer bond that was approved. Yes. One of the initial phases is uh, we're getting an emergency generator for this section of the plant, plus they will be re 
configuring, resizing, if you oh, will, the blowers good. themselves and the blowers, the motors feel more efficient. And so those generators are no, gas operated? Generator, actually, I believe it'll be a diesel. diesel. It's, okay, it's no for the no. case, like if we have an ice storm and power's down in the region, mm -hmm. for the, that generator would kick yeah. in because thank you. Air is the only thing that keeps the plant. But safe. solar panels have no potential. It's not. A they would, but not a number of acres that it would take to offset two hundred and thirty. I'm just having a question. I'm just thinking about a piece of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not all I'll of it. That question at the end. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Further questions on wastewater treatment plant administration, Mr. Wahlberg. Is this a perfect time to ask about last year's Warren article and that sort of thing? No? Or should we wait on Well, that? I don't know about perfect, but it might be uh, convenient. The reason I ask that, and once again, communication is key, as I had a neighbor of mine come up to the other day and said, we heard last year if we approve this that it will be three consecutive years, phase one, phase two, phase three, or whatever. What's with phase one? And then I hear for the meetings, we're not doing phase two for, did right. you say five, ten years? And said, well, yeah. then why was it important last year to the taxpayers that we had to get all three phases, one year after the other, be in compliance? Whatever. I just. Overall, there was $40 million. Right, $41 million. Right. 41 million. So we yeah. broke yeah. it into threes. Three segments. It's going to take me all of two and a half to three years to spend and, and work around yeah. each other to get the $11 million spent. Yeah. And then as we approach the end of this two and a half to three years, we probably, it'll initiate the discussion internally and with the selectmen and with you folks, when do we bring next, forward the next bond. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Frank. Can you, I, I just need a clarification. What is sludge tipping fees? That's getting rid of the sludge. Expensive. Part of the wastewater treatment plant process is you, you reduce wastewater with bugs. Bugs live and die in a 24-hour cycle. The dead bugs, we cycle off the bottom. Uh, we strain, we separate the water from the bugs. It's like thickened water. looks like pudding. Mm. And it's that... Chocolate pudding. Yeah, it's that <laughs> leftover <laughs> dead bug matter, 20% um, solids 80 percent water that we ship up to uh, waste management in rochester thank you okay and, and it's not so nice last last year you bugs. spent 250 yep you budgeted 278 yep which averaged on the 250 it averages about twenty one thousand per month mm -hmm. and then it jumped to about twenty six thousand per month mm -hmm. that you budgeted for but you've actually spent uh, 232. Do you anticipate spending the additional funds? Mm, probably not. No. no. Just a note that is down 0.19%. Yeah. But that's a good point, Frank. We're down 0.19% yeah. right. because we're taking in less sludge from outside communities. Um. We are doing a better job thickening the sludge, so right. we're shipping less water out. Good. And so, in projecting that or keeping track of that, which I have in one of the So you are do some kudos on that line item. Mm -hmm. to, 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 the, to the operators of the plant. So we're all done with administration now, right, guys? So I got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, solid waste collection. Questions? I Mr. Have, Walburton. Well, this is a big area for me, so I mean, I'd like to wipe it all out. Um, <laughs> we are at the point in time, ladies and gentlemen, and I see the municipal solid waste, and I'm going to, you know, I look ahead to the waste tipping fee and everything else. Are we in discussions for, because this is important for future years, so with the people leaving public works, people not picking up, don't want to, those people don't want those jobs anymore. You know what? Actually, they do. Well, okay, well, the longevity's not there. But are we at a point, and we haven't even got in, and to Mr. Chairman, deference to Mr. Chairman, we won't get into it tonight, but just kind of mentioned, there are very many members of this community and specifically on this committee that are interested in getting rid of this commercial trash mm. once and for all. Mm. And that includes the state too. I ran state parks. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about another subject with that that the town management never probably lets you know about, which is important for you to know as public works director. But the question I have on this budget, is there a thought that we are now going to siphon out of this business and either privatize it, get rid of this? It just seems to me 
and I've heard you and Deputy Hale say this for many, many years. I watch all the meetings. The amount of time where our men and women or whatever, mostly men, us picking up trash in this town. It doesn't let us do anything else. And I'm hopeful, I was hopeful when you came before us tonight that there was going to be a statement that said, we, as a matter of fact, Brian, we are in the process of having these discussions. And I really don't care if somebody comes to the beach and says, well, you know, we're the beach. No, no, we, we got we to gotta help you manage public works so that you have the, the, the things in place. So as far as this, I'm serious when I say as far as this section, I'd like to get rid of it all and, and farm it out because I think we're at that point in this community now. So I have nothing else to say about this. Thank you, Mr. Walbert and Mr. Wolseley. Um, in line in, uh, with that, Selectman Barnes just told me, I believe within the past week, that the amount of, of waste from the Hampton Beach State Park in 2018 was double the amount I from 2017. Mm -hmm. And I, I, as well, am looking for ways to get rid of it. Can, can I ju just clarification? Mr. Frank. Thank you. Are we talking about getting rid of the trash pickup for the entire town? That's or correct. Are we that's just what talking they're talking about. about? Yes, that's Why what not? they're talking about. Okay. That's what Brian's talking about. Private Mary time. Louise is more discreet. She's talking about the, the beach. state beach. Privatize. All right. Well, if you privatize it, mm -hmm. and I think you have to take this into consideration. Yeah. All right, you were going to be looking at somebody like waste management or something like mm -hmm, that. Yeah. That the average homeowner now is going to pick up a bill from them of mm -hmm. approximately maybe six hundred dollars, and that's a low estimate on well, we'll an annual time. basis. But your taxes aren't going to go down six hundred dollars to offset that. But wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. We're not going to have a discussion no, on no. what but the no. policy ought to be. No, but I'm okay. saying it, it's. But I'm the saying they're doing an excellent job. Okay. Nobody's saying that I do an excellent I know, job. I'm just trying to but say we ought not to be having a discussion on what the policy but it is ought not to be. That's that's for the board of selectmen to decide. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely okay. right. I understand. We can have a discussion about policy in terms of whether we want to but find it or not. That's fine. Okay, it does have a lot to do with this because I'm going to zero this out. Bag and tag's an option, too. We are at the point in this community, you know, why should my next door neighbor who's 94 years old pay the same in her taxes for one bag of trash a month than somebody that's paying, you know, putting out 5,000 cards? I mean, you know, so when you say it's not time to talk about, this is what one of your fellow, our fellow colleagues has said over the last didn't say it wasn't the time. It's no, no, not no. the forum. What I'm saying is one of the fellow colleagues was sorry, lecturing. It up. No, you don't be sorry. you got to bring, you got to be tough. you got to bring stuff up. One of you guys last week lectured me like, oh, you haven't been around. Don't I love hearing this? Yeah. We are going to start bringing up these issues. The taxpayers want it because they have no voice. Good. And, they, and they put me back in March with the highest vote in town because they wanted a voice. I look forward and to you advancing this in both. Well, we're going to advance. We're going to advance everything. So is made. I'd like just, to zero it out, but I'm not going to do it just, now. Just a real quick this follow is up. Uh, times have been changing in waste management, in the uh, context that some items that people were used to throwing away, like plastic bags and so forth, mm -hmm. are no longer acceptable. If those are mixed in with the trash, quote, um, if they're mixed in with the recycling, it, it's going to uh, cost us more. And if we, the more we have to put into the actual trash, uh, it will make the trash greater. Right. And then that's going to be an extra expense too. But it's something I think that's going to have to be approached gradually. And the Board of Selectmen will be getting together guidelines. I've been asking for guidelines, stickers, flyers, anything to show people the new recycling guidelines and what is acceptable now. But it's going to keep changing. Thank you, Mary Louise. I have made my, my uh, thoughts on this topic known in more appropriate forms than this. Mm -hmm. And I will let them stand as they have on their own merit. If you want to go back and look at them, you can. If you want me to recite them, I will, but in a different forum. Um, May I ask a question? No, I'm not done. Um, <laughs> director, I had <coughs> brought up previously the idea of mulching. Oh, mulching. Mulching. There are a lot of restaurants, have a lot of barrels out there, and a lot of it is really biological waste. Yeah. And mulching would be a great way. Now, I happen to be watching PBS a couple weeks ago. And I see the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts is now taking their biological waste, a separate pickup, 
and they're bringing it all the way over to Charleston, Mass., where they have a biofuel uh, facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, gee, that's not too far from us. Uh, I hope you would give some consideration further to a separate collection for the biological matter, foodstuffs, et cetera, that can be uh, useful, turn into cash maybe even. And so I'll, I'll just leave my thoughts at that. Mr. Moore, you had a question? I have a generic question. I'm not going to any depth. But I think Mr. Jacobs is the expert in this room. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him possibly to spend 30 seconds real shot and sweet. What are your thoughts? Does and I don't know anything about it, but I hear waste management, this, this, and this, and you know, you've got all these men and trucks and everything. Do you think it's worth looking into, or do you think it's because you 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 helped me out a lot on the early one when I said, what about these people? No, we the snow plows, we got this, this, and this. That have to listen to you. It it makes no sense to outsource all that quickly. What are your thoughts, sir? <laughs> A number of years ago, before I got here, yeah. well, I got here in June of 11, and you were just wrapping up a waste management contract. Factually, I've looked at the uh, call logs prior to my getting here, 2009, 10, and early part of 11. There was a huge um, number of calls, especially towards the ends of the week. How come my trash didn't get picked up? And there's a number of letters and correspondence in the files. Waste management had based their contract on their men working 40, maybe 45 hours. There were a number of instances where the drivers came down here, worked for three hours, took that load back to waste management, never came back because they had maxed out on their hours. And so for waste management to control their costs, we, the community, suffered on a level of service. So I believe back from 10 going into 11 that there was that whole idea of le level of service. And part of the selling point back then was, well, we could do it less expensively. One of the things we didn't really accurately forecast is maintenance of the vehicles and um, replacement of the vehicles. Those two items were left out. Um, <laughs> So there's always going to be something give if you make a concession on one side, you might be possibly giving up something on the other, and that is level of service. And I know a number of people in this community, we depend and, and have an, mm -hmm. a reasonable expectation for a certain level of service. The department makes a big effort that if we do miss a street or a stop, that you know we go back. Uh, and, and we, we pick those up. Uh, Mary Louise has given me 20 to 30 of those, and we, we go and handle them. Yeah. Because it, especially if, if, if it's before 3.30 and people are done, we just go and handle it. So it, it gets to a level of service. So these, all these other ideas about um, composting waste to, you know, paper bag, to, mm -hmm. yeah. it's if it's for the community to decide. I, I certainly have some thoughts and comments and some educated opinion, but it's, it's in the end, it'll, it'll be up for the community to decide. The biggest thing that kills us is transportation. I even looked at in the last six months, why don't I get my own driver, my own trailers, mm -hmm, right. to heck with these outside guys. My cost spread over the number of loads was double what we're paying. Mm -hmm. So they've got us, you know, they know just where to price their service. So that, that's always going to be the battle, the battleground, is, is over transportation. Like for Cambridge going to Charlestown, uh, the haul cost is probably pretty yeah. minimal, but the collection cost is probably a fair amount of money. That's yeah, all in the collection thing. But for us, recyclables going to Bill Ricca, C&D, um, you know, having to travel away and the waste going up to waste management. Mm -hmm. I mean, we looked at like, we had an offer from northern New Hampshire, $25 a ton for trash instead of 65 Oh, but it's only $700 per load to get it there. So there was the difference. It was always the transportation that, Thank that you. made or bro broke the, each one of the proposals. Thank you, Chris. Uh, one final. Mr. Lovern. I appreciate what you said. I don't know what forum you were referring to that you spoke, because you've spoken at several, which is great. So I guess my question is, 
hopefully there'll be a time put aside that a forum here or wherever it is. I'll send you a video snippet or two. Oh, no, I, the video I want. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. I want to make one more comment on this to, to make sure everybody understands. I don't know if everybody watched or two weeks ago picked up the Hampton Union, one of the, I think, one of the greatest communicators in town and Norm Silverdick. And he brought up an issue that people like myself and many others have been saying. And one of the reasons we bring up about looking at privatizing trash and having commercial trash. Hey, listen, I've got a tons of friends who are business people watching this going, Arr! too bad. Paying for commercial trash. Um, industrial surcharge. I mean, we have that mess over on Toll Farm Road uh, and, and, you know, Smutty knows everything else. Yeah. But the point, I'm, the point I'm saying, the only reason I bring that up, and nobody is saying that public works, listen, I'm for all mm -hmm. the employees and stuff. We know the great job they do. But if we're going to bring in increases in a budget, it behooves anybody not to be talking about these mm -hmm. things and to say that, well, this and that, what we had a committee years ago, and I agree with Selectman Woolsey, it may take, it's not going to happen this year. I'm throwing it out there because we need to start talking about these things because with the third, with the 41 million coming down, with all the other right. stuff. Right. We, got, we got the message. Well, well, I'm not finished yet. That's you, a little you're rude. Restating Don't be rude like already. the one that was here last you're week. You're restating what you already no, said. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Okay. I'm on every word. I would love, okay, but well, I'm not finished yet. I'd love to be chairman next year and you sit over here. Well, but I'd, the love, to, I'd love for you to be chairman next year. Well, okay. we'll see. Next month would be fine. That's fine. But the point I'm saying is this. You have to understand, and much to DeLuca, <coughs> my friend Mr. DeLuca's amazement, you got to bring these issues up. We can't just sit here and say, yeah. and never mind, and, and no difference to you, you're not a taxpayer in this town, but i got to tell you, forget saying what the community wants. What do you want? What do you believe in? We put our faith, your selectman put the, as we asked mm -hmm. uh, Chief Sawyer and Chief Ayer last week, Mm -hmm. you, you can't turn around and say, look at the management and say, well, am I supposed to say that? That's part of the problem. If you, and you've got excellent experience, believe in something, bring it forth. This commercial thing is getting worse than ever. And I will say one more thing. And I don't know if you're aware of this, because the management of this town won't tell you anyway. But any time that you want to have a discussion with me about state parks on the seacoast, I'm the only person who ever was a director on the seacoast yeah. and a selectman for yeah. seven years. So they can sit upstairs and tell you, if you want me to come to your office, I'll tell you what's going on down there. Phil Bean is right on target. Mm -hmm. So I say that because it does, it is relevant. And we can't just keep passing these budgets because as it stands now, and I had a ton of phone calls I told Mary Louise about, this budget as it stands is going nowhere. And so we got to tell the public, yes, we are. We do hear you. Mm -hmm. We've got to talk about these issues. If we're not going to do that, let's get a, the million-dollar payroll out of town hall, push mm -hmm. it out of the way, and just keep, keep doing what we're doing. So that's all I'm going to say. Mr. Pluff, do you have anything to say on solid waste question? Great. Solid waste. I think we're about done with that topic, don't you? Real quick. Okay. I want to yeah, yeah. elaborate briefly on what Brian has said. The New Hampshire State park has never enforced a carry-in, carry-out policy. And Brian can tell you from what used to happen in the uh, <laughs> restrooms and all this stuff, everything is commingled. You don't find that if you go up into Maine into the beaches up there. They wouldn't stand no. for it. Instead of paying high school kids and people to stand there and enforce carry-in, carry-out, when I came back on the Board of Selectmen in 2013, I went over, and I'm at the transfer station fairly frequently, and I, I went over, and I went in the back to dump some branches, and I saw this weird piles of stuff. And I went back to the town office, and I said to the town manager, what the heck is that stuff down in the public works yard? And he said, oh, that's beach rakings. Beach rakings. Three, four mountains of sand with broken umbrellas and all this stuff in them. Of course, we're not uh, finding that anymore. But the state has never enforced carry in, carry out, and they've never enforced recycling at that beach. And we have had, I believe, both recycling and trash carts out there for people to throw stuff in. Mm -hmm. But when you commingle waste, with recycling, it messes you up. They're gonna charge you for the full cost to dispose of waste. 
Okay. So th that that state park is causing huge problems for this town. We're on to uh, landfill operations. Uh, Chris, I noticed that your groundwater monitoring is up 585 percent. Briefly, <laughs> please. Uh, PFOA testing. Thank you. Any other questions on landfill, Mr. Walbert? 30 years from 1995 was the date that Frank Underwood and company said that uh, we could build a Gillix gazebo up on top of the hill with the gas fence. And Mike, and we, those of us who are very involved in it, are we still on target? Because we're really talking seven, it's hard to believe. 23 and a half years ago, three people at this table sat up and we, we opened up the transfer station June 10th, 1995. Yeah. We actually opened it in May, but we christened it on June 10th. Yeah. So we were told 30 years to mo in quote monitoring it's a heck of a piece of property. I've been up to the top of that. So is that still, is everything on par for that to be, like, what I say, usable or whatever we can do up there, a recreational area or whatever? They haven't really changed passive recreation. They really passive, haven't right. changed yep. their uh, MO yeah. uh, with respect to the landfill. In other words, uh, it's not going to become a ski school or a hang gliding course or something <laughs> like that. And certainly with... Um, now testing for PFOAs is is more of a caution not to do anything to yeah. disturb it, if you will. But I don't see it. Uh, that's the current status. With and, and can I just status. say, as an aside, um, Ryan Sharp, can, can I just yes. tell you? I mean, yes. you hit a home run there, yep. and I just want to. You know, it's funny because I, I, my kids always say I have no life because I either watch John Wayne movies or the Slackman's meetings, but. I do go over to the transfer station quite a bit, and I, I have to, and that was our baby, right? So, I mean, yeah. transfer station, yeah. we implemented that along with the police station, Mr. Yeah. Sullivan, those other things. But I got to tell you, the people and Danny Coffin, everybody over there, that transfer station is so popular. People love that. I mean, it, and you make it convenient, but you did a nice job putting him in charge because you want to talk about, you know, you go to some communities and they look at you like, you know, hey, what are you doing here? You go over and Ryan says, hi, Brian, oh, how are you yeah. doing? How's it feel? Yeah. I just wanted to share that Absolutely. with you. But that's all I had on the, to post uh, on the landfill maintenance. Yep. So any more questions on the former dump? <laughs> <laughs> the George Hada dump? Thank you. <laughs> Transportation. Questions? Nope. Well, that's the same thing we alluded to. Thank you. Transfer station. The alternative to the former dump. Love the transfer station. I just wish it was. I wish the Questions budget. on the transfer station. Nope. You could have been. You know. You, you could have been a drill sergeant. He moves things along, doesn't he? Pretty well. Um, Only when he talks does it slow down. Repair is in maintenance. Four hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's. What the? Uh, you're gonna focus. What five well, words you have on that? No hired equipment. Four hundred percent. Oh, did I miss? Let me give myself a line here. Mm. Yeah, that's um, yeah, high equipment point percent. Sorry, we've in the this past year, and we're anticipating it continuing next year. We have a, a ton of uh, pavement uh, trimmings, uh, brushes seem to have been uh, exorbitantly high, so we're using that particular line to haul call in specialized equipment if we need it be it excavators and payloaders to help us clean up the yard. Okay, relatively small dollar yeah, amount, not to worry about yeah. That's enough. Uh, Part-time wages is up 30%. Again, a relatively small dollar amount. I don't think there's a big deal there. Um, I find it interesting that water is down 25, 45.9%. I assume there's a leak there and it's been fixed, that is. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm be waking up this morning and I'm going to call Jen up and say, I've got a water leak. I may call you. Any other questions on the transfer station? No, thank you. Moving on to sewerage collection and disposal, repairs, and maintenance. Questions? Thank you. And sewer treatment. You know, questions? Yeah, the only question, and this goes way back with many of us, the exit sewer agreement that we pay the town of Exeter for how many residents, Mary Louise, do we have on one lane now? Is it like 12 or? Probably, yeah, a dozen. So of. it probably increased because yeah. didn't they have a, add a couple houses there? No? Well, yeah. they they Exeter approved us a $42 million sewer bond. 
Yeah. Right. As part of that, the fee went from seven thousand in one year to twenty seven. Right, next. I saw it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yes, we've had one uh, I think two Donna Lane is a new residence. Yeah. So the, that combination uh, there has been building off of there. one. Thank you. No, I, I, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. And Any other questions on that? The rye sewer agreement is not on here. Right. But we do take. Well, waste. that's an income stream. That's a revenue. That's, that's a revenue source. That's that's revenue. Revenue. That will get Hope recalculated with the new that. bonds. Yeah. Any other questions on sewerage treatment? No. No. Wow. I'm really impressed that you guys are the first department, and you are the biggest department, right? Dollar wise. Yeah. Uh, but you're also the first department to walk away without having any pending questions. Well, we have more discussion. Yeah. You, Thus far, you, Thus far. You know so I guess Mr. Walburton is suggesting you stick around for the next item on our agenda. Well, what, no, I didn't say that, but we will have fun. I want to thank you for coming. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Mary Louise, what is it? Well, before you, you we have will. in the back of your books. Oh, the vehicles, yes. The vehicles for public works. And Chris has done a great job because he did... Yep. Color coding. I remember a couple of years ago I asked Jen, him if Jen's we could the color coder. differentiate. <laughs> and this department has more vehicles, obviously. It's way in the back. Yeah, a lot of old vehicles. Appendix and, D. Yeah, way in the back. And I think the selectmen have not gone through this yet, but the highway inventory and all really need to, uh, Mary to be looked at. Mary Louise, this yes. is a point here. Uh, this is a budget workshop on their budget. Now, the rolling stock, as you often call it, is uh, detailed background information on the budget. Now, we've completed going over their budget. This is why they have but maintenance have, but this, in we're, their we're budget. Dealing with their, I understand that. We already went through all those lines. You no, know, you didn't go through what We went actually, through their maintenance. We went through the vehicle maintenance. You didn't go through each vehicle. The vehicle. No, we didn't go, but we're not. We're going through the budget. We're not going through. It is part we're, we're of not, the budget. Look at, and as you said, the selectmen haven't gone through it. And I know. And we all and look I've forward to you. And we all look forward to pestering them again. Yes, Please don't and I pester will us. continue. But this is a vital we part. We are in a budget workshop, not a rolling this stock workshop. This is a vital part I agree. of the public it works budget. It is a budget. vital set of details what on a line item that we've okay. already discussed. All right. Well, that's a, Calm so down. When do we go over this, now, by the way? Under uh, vehicle you maintenance look, and the various uh, sections that they exist. No, no, no. And, Other years we went over And Mr. Seven. Jacobs has no, been not, very. Not since I've been here, and I've been here six. Mr. This is part of public works. And Mr. Mary Louise, Jacobs, I don't intend to go through every vehicle. If you want to make a summary statement, I'm okay with that. Mr. Jacobs has provided us with specifics on his vehicles and accessories. And the nice uh, section that if when you look on the second uh, column to the uh, right, condition and rating. 1 through 10, and what concerns me is on the highway inventory, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 vehicles, yeah. 6 and below. Right. Why are we having, for example, a 10 right here, the uh, 2004 Chevy Silverado pickup with plow? Is that going to be traded in? Is it going to sit out in the yard and, and get rusty? Question. What's happening with these vehicles? The next one, you have the highway inventory on the next sheet. And under your condition and rating, it says one is good, ten is worse. Yeah, one, true. two, three, four, five vehicles under highway inventory. John, 1988 John Deere Uniloader. Are, are we just keeping that to sit in the yard, or are all these vehicles still being used? And I'm concerned about that. If you look on the next page, you've got a utility trailer that's marked as a 10. Why is it there? The Ingersoll Rand Corporation for Highway 1989. These vehicles either need to be traded in, sold for scrap, or replaced but I'm concerned that we are carrying too much stuff in public works, and I think we need to downsize a little bit and at least take a look at it. So I'm just waving that out in the front, and I will be bringing this up again with the Board of Selectmen. Look at transfer station inventory conditions. Three of those vehicles are nine. 
Actually, it shows that the 2003 GMC is dead in the water. So what's going to happen with all of these? So I think that, just to call to your attention, mm -hmm. I think that a concern is what is happening. Do, does the Public Works Department need replacements for some of these vehicles? Right. Should they be discarded? Should they be traded in? But that's a big, he has more vehicles than any other department. And I just want to make sure he has what he needs, but that we don't have derelicts sitting around with no value. Chris, do you have what you need? We've got a Warren article prepared to address the needs of the department in, in fiscal year 19. Okay, thank you. Christy, are we capturing on our assets, uh, fixed asset policy, are we capturing all of these vehicles and depreciating them accordingly? Yes. Thank you. We are capturing them, in case for those in TV land that didn't hear Christy, we are capturing on a fixed asset policy, and they are being depreciated accordingly. And we'll be reviewing the fixed assets later in the year, as we discussed at our last meeting. But with all due respect. Mr. Warburton, do you have a... Yeah, I do. And I think, Mrs. well, the reason why... Do you think? Well, Mrs. Woolsey has, is bringing it up here because at her board, her chairman lets her talk for 20 seconds, so she can't bring it up there. Well, it's a good so, thing I'm so generous. Well, thank you. But this is an issue because one of the things that we need to drill on down, if you've got a vehicle that's got 30,000 and it's, it's rated an 8 or it's rated a 2, Don Reddick's important. We're talking millions of dollars of yes. vehicles. And the reason I didn't bring this up tonight because I stuck to the budget. But, I mean, how many, I mean, does, does everybody at Public Works have a, have a pickup truck? Does everybody have, I think I heard the other night, didn't you say that somebody's using your vehicle? All right, it is the perfect time to, to so in another discussion, it doesn't, fixed assets are one thing, but we need to drill down on these vehicles and let the public, because it's the public that's voting on these purchases. You know, if I went home and said, gee, my wife, I bought a new vehicle, and th two years later it's worth nothing, you think she's going to sit there, oh, that's okay, it's part of our budget, let's just, let's just move on. Right, right, yeah. just a point. Uh, it's, we're going to be talking about the fixed assets later on, that's true. Right. We're also going to be talking about Chris's upcoming Warren article on new, new vehicle uh, stuff. Wait. Old and vehicles, I'm talking No, on the new stuff that he needs. Right. Okay? And the new stuff that he needs is definitely related to the stuff that he currently has. Okay, and so once again, we'll be able to talk about this rolling stock thing. I don't object to going into the rolling stock tonight. I objected to going and talking about every vehicle. I don't want to do a deep drill down on this stuff. Why? Because we're dealing with the budget, and if you want to talk about vehicles related to the budget, for example, how much more maintenance is being spent because of the ancientness of our vehicles or something like that, makes perfect sense, right, because it's budget related. But we're doing budgets right now. Okay. Yeah. Later we'll so, be doing new capital equipment purchases, and it will be appropriate again there. Later we'll be talking about fixed assets, and it will be appropriate discussions so, then. Now I let I let the conversation take place to the extent I that Mary Louise brought sufficient enlightenment well, and wisdom to us, I have, and I think we can bring it to a rest at this mm -hmm. point. Wait a minute. Some I have, question. I have a question. Hold on. I have a question because Mary Louise, go ahead. You have the floor. I have one quick follow-up. A former public works director, nothing to do with Mr. Jacobs, purchased two freight liners yeah. in 2002, I believe, that mm -hmm. sat on the edge of the marsh and rotted. They ended up, and I think you got rid of one or both of them a couple of years ago, and I think the, uh, my, the odometer on, on them or on one of them was like 23,000 miles. I'm not paying money in my taxes for vehicles sitting down there and wasting away. We need to keep a sharp eye on vehicles in every department. But this department, bless their hearts, has, most has the most vehicles, and I think we need to really pay attention. Yeah, I, think it's, I think it's a good thing to point out waste. Yeah. And that's an example of waste. Oh, and, and I if guess. You just, if you just point out the waste, I'm happy with that. You can bring up that at any time. So that's exactly what we're here for, or a part of what we're here for. But wait Mr. Warburg. Wait a minute. You and I have known each other a long time. I find it very interesting. And you want to go back to tapes? You used to sit at this table and demand <laughs> that you were allowed to speak, sometimes for an hour and 20 minutes. I haven't stopped anybody. <laughs> but no, but you seem to be in this rush mode just like your last year. I don't year want redundancy. 
well, unnecessary, I don't unnecessary think, redundancy. Okay, but my, my thing had nothing to do with redundancy. Oh. What I said, you made a statement, the following was, fixed assets and new capital purchases. What about what we have now? I told you. I plan it's in the budget. We were talking no, about no, no, the budget. No, 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 no. Listen. What is on the agenda, Brian, is a budget. Okay. That's so what's on the agenda. If you want to talk about rolling stocks as it relates to the budget, that's fine. I'm going to talk about rolling stock at another meeting. That's fine as well, as long as it's germane to what's on the agenda. Wait a minute. Time out here. You're telling me as a member of the budget committee, if that's the case, you're pulling the same crap that the last three years they pulled. The the taxpayers are not voting for these budgets. You're going to sit here with millions of dollars of public works d department vehicles, and, and you're j you're going to you're going to turn out to be just what's happening on Monday nights. Basically, we can't. Do I don't care what was discussed or not discussed. As a sitting member of this budget committee, are you down right? I'm going to go. You made a comment earlier about Jerry and I was a great guy. It was okay for Jerry to go back three years on the budget and take and he did a great job. I'm the same way. I'm not interested in saying, but because you didn't ask it under line item 6.7, that's not going to happen. And I will tell you, you let me know which meeting I can add it on the agenda. And Mrs. Woolsey is absolutely correct. I wish you were here every week. Well, you'll we find out when we get into new business, when we talk the schedule, that's exactly where we identify. Well, then why did you say that? you were being able to do that. Why didn't you say I've that? I've already earlier? said now four times said that there will plan. be two other opportunities at a minimum okay. to talk about your damn rolling stock. What do you mean? It's not mine. It's the town's. It's not. the taxpayers. So don't. Now, we are done with the DPW budget as I can see it. We are, and let we me are tell you moving something. on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We are moving Wait on to new business. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm going to make one thing perfectly clear to you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to be shut up, and I don't appreciate you telling me that we are done. I'll tell you when I'm done, because this is what's been happening in this town, starting with the top floor in this town. You know what I'm bringing next week? A rubber stamp. I'm going to bring a rubber stamp and give one to you, give one to Steve LaBranch and a few others. That's exactly what you're trying to do. The people are fed up in this town. Come, come and talk to the people that I hang out with that are struggling to pay their bills. You're down late, they want Brian Warbrick to go over to rolling stock, and they want to talk about the ridiculous raises in town hall and creation of new positions. So I don't care how, whether you like it or not, and you're not going to sit here and tell me when I can bring up something and when I can't. So you better get that through your head right now. Are you done? May, may yeah, I'm done. No. May. Have, have you finished? Brian? I'm done. Have you had so your I hope you site? understood what I have just said. Have you had your complete set? Yes. Okay, fine. Mr. Chairman, may Pardon we me. thank... May we One thank moment, Director please. Jacobs One and moment, please. And Deputy Director. Mary Louise, about One you. moment, please. Stop raising your voice. Yeah. And we want to thank both of you very much for your hard work. Do a great job. And for Anne's Lane, Jen. <laughs> Brian, I want you to know. But we appreciate it. Hey, listen, you, you already gave me a speech, so I already gave you my no, quote, so I don't I'm need to give you my retort. I think as a courtesy of these they two can be, they nice can go. employees. I've already been trying to do that, Mary Louise, but I have been... You're, you're running your mouth by the long. by Just the relax. famous team that's cross table here. Yes, I have been inhibited from doing so. Inhibited. Thank you very much, Chris and Jen, for coming Thank in you. and helping us prepare <laughs> the budget. And as far as Brian is concerned, you can ask anyone in town. I am Mr. Rubber Stamp. I agree with everything, don't I, Chris? All the time. Everyone knows that. That's a bunch of BS. And secondly, if you want me to go talk to the people you talk to, I'd be delighted to. Because it's time that Christy, it's you. time that so much brainwashing that goes on in this town gets dissipated. Yeah, well. So on to new business. Oh, now for a new information yes, I request. Hope the toilet's working. <laughs> on to new business. New business. We Speaking have a new information request, uh, I understand, is that correct? Water. Uh, what? Do we have new information requests? Well, I don't know whether you would consider this a new information request, but I am happy to... Uh, no, it's not about the schedule. That's coming up. It's about the vehicles. What about the vehicles? I, I don't know. You guys were talking back and forth. There is no new information no request information. on that. Okay. We're all happy with the vehicle report. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I have one one request. And no. Christy, no, 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 no. <coughs> Christy, I don't know whether you want to hear this or not. You may want to you stay for this topic in general. Ten million dollars worth of, of course, Christy. Uh, 
but it may be more appropriate for the, uh, even you, uh, Jamie, or even uh, Mary Louise. No, no. Yeah, I, just, I don't think you're it's no, I have been trying to work quietly machine. behind the scenes yeah. to actually acquire the numbers for the default just, budget. I watch your meetings. Now, this is the first time that we've got a budget book with a default budget column is all zeros. Okay. Now, I find it necessary to make an, an official in, uh, information request for the default budget. Understood. Okay. Who should I be asking that request of? You just did, and we'll pass that on to you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. There. So on the, on the new request is the default budget. Good. Any other new information requests? I don't understand why we can't have Jen or Chris come back for an hour of their time to go over each of the vehicles. We used to do this all the we time. We can. Right, well, now the no, that's right now the topic is new information requests. Are there any? I'm hearing none. Uh, Great. The, well, we're not. Well, okay. before you said new information requests, what about uh, we're definitely going to get um, the police outside agencies? I'll wait to see okay. that to believe it. Can I get the cable TV guys to give me the monitor back, please? Yeah, that's still on the uh, on the sheet. Outside agencies detail report of By 2018 pay and hours work per outside officer slash title slash organization. All right. And thank Mary Louise for being here tonight. You add a lot of value, as you always do. Answer, is there any other information request desired? Okay, good. Uh, could I have the monitor back, please? Uh, I have... Find up there. Find up where? He wants to bring it there. I know, the monitor. Oh, oh, he wants the picture up on the screens. Well, I'm, I'm about to bring up the actual schedule uh, on the screen because we need to work on it. Um, thank you, thank you. I know I have this already up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. <sighs> there. Okay, what are we doing here? That's the HamptonBud.com. Shut it down accidentally. And your agendas aren't posted either. I'll find out why. Have, I've asked you, they haven't been since uh, April. Well, I've passed it on. So the okay. question is right now we've got uh, tentatively scheduled uh, next Tuesday for a meeting, which is, of course, two days before Thanksgiving. And as you know, tough. Um, Mary Liz? tough. As you know, we discussed this earlier in the spring when I created this initial schedule, and um, here it is here: a regular monthly meeting reserved two days before Thanksgiving, which is hoped not to be needed. Uh, and we all agreed we would tr strive to not have to have that meeting, but I think we have to look at the subsequent meetings that follow to make sure that we have captured first of all everything; nothing's missed. And also go through these items and think, well, maybe some of these people we don't need to come in. For example, my favorite example is mosquito control. Maybe we don't have to have them come in. Uh, so that's what this uh, item on the new business for the schedule is about, is the content of the schedule. Um, so is there anything I'm missing on this? Uh, Brian, Brian, I'm hearing you want to have an item in there for well, I don't. Talk? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Um, we are approving budgets for the entire town. What's this stuff now? Now we're going to pick and choose. What happens if mosquito control has a half a million dollar budget next year? I said it was an example. I'm not. I think there. every department needs to come in. Okay. And so is anybody them. missing? Well, I don't see. But is mosquito in my eyesight? Is yes, it is right there. Okay, so there's nobody. Ta I, I yeah, we have ta tax collector on a different night than town clerk. Is that a reason for that? Or no? Some mosquito control that right here. Is. When do we discuss the administration, town administration? When is that? Town administration. administration. General government. General yeah. government, yeah. Yeah, well, that we better be, have a whole night for that. That would be right after Thanksgiving. That's why I pulled things like the town clerk and some of the other uh, large topics off of that November 28th date because of discussions I had with you about large, large discussion on general government. Yeah. Uh, so that was actually one line. I, mean, I split them into two. 
And can I ask, uh, not to go ahead for, for our school board representative, when are we getting the school board book? Well, I believe we're December 18th. We're December 4th. 4th, is that what it is? That's three weeks. That sounds about right. That's about yeah. the time that it generally And we're finishing up. We have one final meeting, yeah. which will be tomorrow. Right. The meeting's Tuesday the 4th. It's about the right time. We have a budget, okay. Excuse me, can I have a floor? Okay. We have a final meeting tomorrow. to finalize the budget tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once we complete that, we will be more than willing to provide books as we've always done, probably prior to the actual date. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Is it going to be Friday we come in and get them? That's all I'm asking. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it'll be. They always uh, send it'll be, the, yeah. it'll be during the I have the a key to the town week. hall anyway, so I'll come in on the weekend. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I had to turn that in, didn't I? <laughs> And say so even 90 budget books are unlikely to be stored in the town hall. Yeah, right. No, you can pick them No, up I know that. I'm just saying in general. Right. No, I don't have a problem. Mary It'll Louise? be a good budget. Yes. And, and we don't want to be sitting here for the rest of the night. I do want to point out, I had to chuckle um, when uh, Mr. LeBranch mentioned uh, the, the budget committee meeting till midnight. Uh, the original budget committees were composed of 12 elected officials and the three appointees. And you, you, we are now down to six elected officials, so the budget committee basically has been cut in half. Right. I don't imagine uh, any of you will be going to midnight. But my concern is There's no not beach representation tonight, just for the record. Yeah. yeah. So my, just stay on the content of the my, schedule. My concern, gentlemen, is this. The chairman is very, very talented at technology. But content, Hampton, content. We'll, Hampton, deal with, we'll deal with your complaint no, 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 on distribution no, no, no. in a minute. Wait, just Let's take care of the content first. Well, Let him speak. Let, let, her speak. let her speak. I'm trying to keep people on topic. The topic is the content of our schedule. Is, there's nothing apparently missing. No one has indicated anything. Is there anything to be should be removed? Apparently none. Does anyone want to move things around at all? I, I, These are the questions relative to content I'm trying to deal with. Okay, I think, you know, the... Mosquito thing should probably be waivered. It's only a hundred thousand dollars, and it's slightly increased. But it, from the overall perspective, we're not talking okay. about a lot of money to the relative bottom line of the budget. And it's my thinking, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. If anybody insists on any one of these people coming in, we're going to have them come in. Okay. All right. So apparently, just okay, the the mosquito people. I have one so we have we have an assistance that we don't want any removal from one member. And that's enough to end that discussion, okay? Now the question is, sh does anyone need to be moved around or does anything need to be added? For example, some people were talking about adding uh, a rolling stock as a well, separate yeah, topic. Do you want that to be added? If so, where? Here's your chance. <laughs> if you're going to review rolling stock and he's going to change the list when he submits a warrant article, Maybe but that's why the time. Why do it then? Because this yeah. warrant article is proposed to replace this yeah. number 22, number 38. So number we can 49. do it at the time we discuss yeah. his warrant article. Because he's he's going to propose what it what he wants to replace. I agree. I agree. If you talk about what he wants to replace before he knows what he wants to replace, you're not going to know. So but let's wait to the warrant article discussion. I would do that with the warrant articles but, I propose. Excuse me. But I have a question just oh. to add to Mr. what you're Moore. saying. So they proposed the article, the warrant article, and I want to buy ABC new trucks. <coughs> two trucks. Yeah. During those discussions, we should also be able to ask about XYZ, number 9 and number 10 on his list. Yes. To yes. make right. sure they're getting right. rid of them, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. To That's see fine. what Thank you, Mike. would replace what he has now that needs to be replaced. Correct. I'm with you. I do it all at the same time. I agree with you. Thank Sounds you, good Michael. to me. <clears throat> so look at our overall fixed asset, probably even as a prelude to the, all the warrant articles, I imagine, might be a, an idea. What do you guys think about that? Repeat I, that, please. To look at the overall fixed asset um, situation. Such uh, as the, police vehicles and the police department. Everything fire is, everything and is the fire a fixed department. asset, yeah. 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 I think we should. There's a prelude to that. I've got, 
Um, you recall a few meetings ago, we had uh, I requested uh, Chris to come in and do a thing on all of our funds, and we tabled that to a subsequent meeting. As you see, I mean, it's December 6th. It's at the tail end of December 6th there. Um, and I'm wondering if that should be, if we should put the fixed asset at the tail end of that, uh, or whether we should just take the funds and the fixed assets and put it into a separate meeting by themselves. What do you guys think? Isn't supposed to be too long a meeting, is it? Well, who's the person? Uh, I don't know. Assessing has been outsourced, so I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of could conversation be a on lot that. Of discussion. Uh, we're outsourcing the website Infotech and the website associated with that. Yeah, there may be right. some discussion on that. Shouldn't you be, be uh, talking about fixed assets when the people are here from that department? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be looking at a list of fixed assets. We need right. them to respond. Yeah. Don't we? No. We we will formulate questions. Uh, the fixed asset is actually something that's dealt with entirely by the finance department, so Christy will be here presenting the fixed assets. Yeah, and they're coming okay. in the 8th anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean the 6th. Well, she's, she's going to be here at every budget. Yeah. budget right, workshop. but we're specifically going to talk about her finance department, right. so why not ask it then? No? And, and that's fine. I was suggesting yeah. it as one of the options. That might be a good, because you've got assessing and review. And, yeah, we might have some time that night. Well, we, actually, that won't be a bad night, because town clerk, that will go through. Yeah. yeah. That, that should, yeah, the 6th, the 28th is too too much in that agenda. Can't add it there. Everybody comfortable with 12 6 having the yep. addition of fixed assets? Yep. And okay. then the school is the summer 4th. Any other thoughts on the content of our calendar? All set. I have to remind you guys that when you go over to HamptonBud.com, there's this important dates thing here, which is what I built the schedule on, on the monitor now. And you can see the last dates for these petitions. So we could be looking at warrant articles very close to our public hearing. So as usual, every year we get, you know, a, not just real snow, but we get snowed with warrant articles to be dealing with. So, um, you know, when it gets into the January, between doing the final budget reviews and, and taking care of the, the mountain of warrant articles that may come our way, we're going to be pretty tight in January. So uh, let's try to get everything done on the schedule as we can in December. That's what I'm trying to suggest. So please think of anything that might be missing here or you might want to move around. Mr. Morrow. I'm having a little bit of a struggle, which I usually do. <coughs> when I was working at Liberty Mutual for <coughs> X number of years, <coughs> I always wanted the people to tell me their problems and all those problems. I was that type of a person. Now, a lot of it sounds like griping and this, this, and this. But there's a reason for that. Why? I was the type of person, I wanted to hear all the problems and I wanted to hear all the gripes. Then I'd take the right people who would talk about A versus B and C into a room. Now that we all agree there's a problem, we all agree exactly what it is, what are we going to do about it? What's the solution and what's the fix? So griping without having a solution or griping without having a thing, how do we do it? So here's my struggle. I'm agreeing with Brian, we need to get to the detail. But we're not the board of selectmen. Right. You're the governing body. Right. So I might have a lot of solutions, but they don't work in the budget area. That, that makes the struggle I have. Now, some of you gentlemen mm -hmm. were selectmen, and now you're budget people. So you've, you've been in both sides of the aisle. You're a select person, you're okay. a select person, you're a select person. But you I'm not. <laughs> You're grading without the select. Please, please keep in mind, we're talking about the contents of the schedule. So, and so my point being, well, I don't, the content of the schedule is going to mean deciding what we're going to talk about. What okay. talk about fixed assets if we can't do anything and solve it? Well, it's to be educated on the status of fixed assets. That's the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon me? It's to be educated on the status of fixed assets and how they're processed. Uh, and that's what it's all about, just getting education on it. So, the, but, but remember... Remember to Tim, and I know Tim knows this. Very important thing that you have to understand. We, this budget that we're talking about, 2019, is ours. Right. When the voters, and Tim always says it right, the liver of session, the, uh, the legislative body, after that it goes to the voters. Mm -hmm. Right. When a budget, which in this case will be now the fall budget, at that point it's the selectmen's budget, Mary Louise Woolsey and Company. We absolutely have a right to go line by line. Nobody's telling Chris Jacobs or any of these people, okay, I want you to take 20000 and you're going to spend it on this. 
But we have a right to raise the questions, because guess what? We can cut the budget anytime we want, the final budget. We can add to it, as Mr. Mm -hmm. Jones said earlier about coming back to review. So it's not like we're telling them what to do, but we this is our budget. This is what we're responsible for putting this to, to the uh, to, to the voters. Anything else on the content of the schedule, Mary Louise? Discussion, especially on the fixed assets and the uh, vehicles, particularly for public yeah. works, you want to at least be able to inform the public right. of a basically a problem. And, and I'm happy for the way that Mr. Jacobs has crafted uh, his vehicle listings and showing us the conditions of them and so forth because that's important. All right, we're talking schedule and I, I, I have a big problem and you and I have discussed this. On content, Hampton, content but first. Hampton. Are we done but, with content? You'll have your chance. No, when done no, with no, I'm on, this is my chance right here because I'm looking at the screen. HamptonBud.com is not a town web <coughs> site. And if you will recall, and I have explained to you that in the past, chairman of the budget committee have set up schedules, posted on the, posted on the way, you might give Frank one too if you have an extra one, Mike is already aware. Posted we on the, the town web site so people can look and say, gee whiz, I really want to watch that meeting. How many people are going to go to HamptonBudNot.com? It's, you're a genius at doing technology, but this is not a town website. Plus historical records. Right. And people should be able to go on and say, gee, I, I really want to see what the heck's happening in public works. They should be able to see it clearly posted under documents budget committee on the town website and say, gee whiz, I really want to go to that meeting on the 14th or 15th or whatever today is so that I can see the public works budget. A lot of people aren't going to watch every single budget meeting, but there are some areas that they want to focus on. And I think it's a terrible disservice to this committee to not have the budget committee schedule posted on channel 22 under the town of Hampton documents budget committee and I have a problem with this with agendas coming out what the night before or within 24 hours or something there should be and you and I have talked about this and there should be about a week's notice unless you have a schedule that is available to them right there you remember Michael you know the schedule yep. uh, so as a taxpayer I object to, it, you can, HamptonBud.com is fine, people can go on and look, they can do whatever they want, but it is not an official town website to inform the voting public, and I think that is very wrong. Any other thoughts on the contents of the schedule? Well, what good are you worrying about contents set? on the schedule if you're not We're all set on the, the uh, contents of the schedule? Brian, you okay with it? Yes. Dave, you okay with it? I am, but I agree with this. That's 100%. great. So you're oh, I with the content. I Mike, you okay with the content? So I'm going to add the fixed assets on the at the end, on uh, December sixth. That's yes, the yeah. only change. Right? And who's going to look at it? Who well, we're only on the content now. Yeah. But who's going to look at it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, other new business. Apparently, Mary Louise insists on doing this. What I will refer to as scheduled distribution, mm -hmm. and I will speak oh, to that now. Um, first of all, the agenda has been published uh, at least 48 hours before every meeting, not 24. The law requires 24. I've been doing 48. This committee agreed back in, I believe it was May, that they were comfortable with me making the agenda the night before. In fact, they were comfortable with me actually conforming with the letter of the law, which was to only put out a meeting notice. Right, but I thought it was going to be on the uh, town uh, website, uh, too. Though. And it was. The meeting notices went on the town the website. agenda. The meeting notices are the only thing the law requires. The law does not require an agenda. Why don't we put the May agenda? I finish, please? So, <laughs> that's what I was doing. Mary Louise objected to me on a telephone call in the summertime about that process. And I listened to her thoughts on it. And I believe, I believe she made valid points, so I modified the process. I no longer do meeting notices. I do agendas, 
and they've been going out at least 48 hours, usually two in the morning, two days before uh, the, uh, the actual meeting. So the agendas should not be a problem. Uh, now apparently there, there is an issue with uh, Mary Louise and apparently others uh, who think that the distribution should not be exclusive to HamptonBud.com relative to getting access to the schedule. The schedule, not the agenda, not the minutes, because they're all on the town website now. But you're saying that uh, the uh, schedule should not be exclusively available on HamptonBud.com. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, it should be on the town website. It should have been on the town website. Am I hearing it correctly? Yes? Yes. I believe you are, sir. Thank you. So the desire is to have it also a, a, uh, an ability to get access to the schedule from the town website, correct? That's correct. I'm okay. Excited. So enough said. I will see what that can be done in that topic. Thank you. Sir. Any other new business? So November 20th, what are we doing? Uh, well, November 20th is, is the next topic after we get done with any other new business. Oh, okay. I thought that was... Any the other new business? Mary Louise. I've had my say since the summertime. Mm. Okay, uh, next meeting is uh, November 20, and uh, we don't have anything scheduled there unless you want to consider a new chairman. Well, I think what, what we are asking, what I'm asking, and I have more experience as a selectman and a member of the budget committee than any of you, and what I'm asking to have the public have access to the whole schedule and sometimes you have to adapt it and you'll see on the printout yep. I gave you it says revised <laughs> on something or other if we had to switch times when the town clerk couldn't make it but the public the voters the taxpayers should have access to the entire schedule all in one big sheet on documents Mary Louise on the town website did you not just win your argument I, I why do you continue making an argument after you've won argument. it it's a matter of it's a it's, matter of of being disrespectful to the public, and and I have you and I have gone around right. and discussed so this, this is, a number of times. This is exactly times. why you need to consider. And apparently, having, stuff doesn't get this through. Is, this is exactly why you need to have this, a November twentieth meeting. No, because apparently, was, at least the board of selectmen's representative believes that not only is your chairman uh, preventing the public from sufficient information, but he's less. Uh, uh, transparent than other budget committee chairmen, but he's also disrespectful to the public and perhaps to yes. the body as well. And if that is the case, then you should have another chairman. And if that's the case, you probably wish to have a November 20th meeting. So the question on the table is when is the next meeting? Okay, may I ask Mr. 28th. Frank? Okay, on the November 20th meeting, okay, are we having any presentations? No. 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 Then uh, may I make a recommendation that we forego the November 20th meeting because of the holiday and family and all years. that. All right. That's, That's a really good plan. Right. Any just other thoughts on November the next 20th? meeting, no. Mr. Pluff? But, but, but Mr. Mr. Barr, can we have a vote on it, please? Wait a minute, Frank. You're just proposing that. But the time is limited here. There's a very short time. You'll notice on that copy of the agenda that we missed initially three meetings that year because the town didn't produce the documents yeah. on time and that was a disservice to the budget committee. If you are really going to work on the budget, you can't miss one of those dates. You might have a snow date. It's supposed to be bad at the end of this week. You need to be sitting on your hind ends here working on that budget for the taxpayers of this community and the whole schedule and HamptonBud.com can jump in the lake. You need that whole schedule on but, the town website. I, I understand that, Mary Louise. I, I, with yeah. no disrespect intended, okay? Yeah. There are no off-town departments or offices presenting at that date. So therefore, They're based on that, right. it, it it would behoove us not to spin our wheels on a November 20th. That's why I'm making a recommendation. We forego that and our next meeting, which is the 28th, which is a few days after, with, I assume, department being presented? You saw the schedule. Okay. So 
That's what I'm proposing. So, and you seconded it? I did. Okay. So the problem remains that uh, Mary Louise makes a valid point. Uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, has, in fact, failed to yet produce the budget book in whole. Yeah. The default budget still isn't there. Yeah. The default budget has always been there every time we get a budget book. And yet, uh, instead of going after and taking care of that, we'd rather attack other people who work very hard trying to get more transparency. And I still suggest to you guys that if you want to support the statements that have been made about your chairman, in silence you are supporting it, then you need a new chairman. Absolutely you do. And you need to address it. Otherwise those comments have to be rebutted. And I am not going to do it. My work stands on its own. If it's not acceptable, then so it is not acceptable. Well, I am speaking from experience, Mr. Chairman, and... Now, I know you're speaking from and experience, and the experience this community has had with your raising taxes over decades is well noted as well. I, I don't raise taxes. Oh, no, I know. You have nothing to do but with what's taking place in this town, need, unless it's good, of course. You need transparency for the public. Yeah. That's right. critical. And New Hampton Bud.com provides more transparency than it's this community has ever a seen. It's town website. I don't care. That's probably why it does provide well, more transparency. The very reason it provides more transparency is because it's not a town website. Can That's it. I have a motion. I'm, would Can you we vote accept a motion to Well, adjourn? he's got a motion oh, first a whether motion. we're going to meet on the Mr. 20th. Mr. Frank. Oh, okay. What's your motion? Sorry, who's the second? I just, okay, let Mike, me restate the motion again. Okay. I am saying since no departments, Hampton departments, are, meet, are coming to present, that we forego the meeting and just terminate that meeting for November 20th. Michael seconded it. Second, Mike? Yes. In favor? Opposed? We have tie. But well, you're opposed. Well, you didn't vote. Well, Mary Weaves didn't vote well, either. I think I, I will vote. You're opposed. opposed. Yeah. I yeah. oppose. Help me out. Mr. Here. Chairman? Well, the motion fails. In favor? Because I abstain. I'm Mr. Neutral. <coughs> Favor was uh, Frank, Frank and Frank Michael, yeah, and opposed was Brian and David and myself. Correct. Hmm? Correct. Yes. Just because we have nobody coming in, I think we could use the time to review what we've talked about so far. Well, and, there, and uh, it, I think we'll try to get. It, the in my opinion, we we've, we've well. gone line by line. We beat everything up. For an hour. How much can we beat up anymore? I mean, we we really Frank taken the motion at it. to have the next meeting on November twenty eighth. It's that the motion okay. failed. It failed. Right. I understand. So I'm it just appears as though uh, the majority of the voting members tonight want to have a meeting on two days before Thanksgiving. So, okay. but we're not even sure if we'll have a quorum. So we need to find out. Well, whether we yes. not, we, I mean, that's what you guys want, right? That you want to meet on the twentieth. We need five three, people for a quorum. A motion. I second. I'm you saying if we meet Tuesday, we need five people to come. You voted for the motion. Right. Well, I can't. You can't go out and ask people whether they're going to come or not because then that would become a not a, a, a meeting itself. So either you're going to schedule a meeting for the 20th or keep the scheduled meeting on the 20th more accurately or not. And apparently we will because your motion fits. Do, do you so realize how our you next meeting is November 20th. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Do you realize how how ridiculous this is? Yes, I do. Is Thank you for attending.